The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Thursday, June 3rd, 2021, years after zero. Today's show is massive. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Today, in the middle of the offseason, two days after that June 1st deadline, we heard about potentially being a mover and a shaker for the NFL. We have yet to hear a peep from anybody, but we have... A good feeling, not good authority or inside sources, but we have a good feeling that something in the NFL is going to happen in the next three hours while we're live here on Sirius XM Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio, and YouTube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show. We can't thank you enough. Yesterday, we had a $5,000 ticker trivia giveaway where the answers had to be entered before 4.05 Eastern Standard Time on Twitter. Nobody got the questions right. Wow. We will run those back, and by the way, it'll now be a ten thousand dollar ticker trivia giveaway Whoa. the questions will scroll across the bottom of the screen in our ticker that is absolutely glorious i mean it is a beautiful ticker and you will be able to tweet out your answers make sure you use the hashtag pms 10k ticker giveaway uh or ticker trivia i'm sorry not ticker giveaway pms 10k ticker trivia so we can find you in there enter as many times as you would like we can't wait to give away ten thousand dollars to somebody out there. one 833 4 cannot wait to chat with you. There are some stories and things going on at Boston Connor, Ty Schmidt are here. Uh, all the boys in the back can't thank you enough. The big news um, in the football world mm-hmm. is something that honestly I, and this is, uh, I think this is uh, ignorance. I'd assume this would be considered ignorance, yeah. right? And I think the world, you know, kind of got introduced to a, a lot of this in a much um, more rapid fashion with the invention of cameras and the internet and things being able to be spread around and learning of stuff. And, uh, you know, the whole world is basically, jeez. Mic's <laughs> on. Headset down. Jesus. Packed on. Put it in a pocket. Here we go. The whole world has been learning a lot more, I think, about the the lives that are, are lived, you know, in the United States of America. Right. And, and I feel like a football locker room is such an amazing place because it is truly a melting pot of all different humans. Okay. Although we are all humans, obviously, are where we're from, our experiences that we've lived, the things we've seen, the things that have happened, those all create you as a person. And in a football locker room, you have people who have been created from basically every type of background you could have. You got the uber wealthy kids who have always had the greatest training, the greatest everything, and they're very talented, and they're in there. You got people that come from nothing, homeless people that have had to work through more adversity than than most humans could ever theorize or maybe watch in a movie, then you have people all walks of life in between different countries are represented religions. There's a football locker room is such a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I was very lucky to be in a very um, cool position to be in a locker room for the last, you know, for, not for the last now that I've been retired, but for 12 years of my life, I got a chance to really learn a lot about a lot of things happening in the world. And I think the rest of the world is doing as such here as we continue to unfold here. This, this thing that we just learned, this thing that we just learned about in this NFL and NFLPA settlement where it was called race norming or something mm-hmm. like that. Just right. And by the way, this is not, this is not something that I, you know, feel like I want to hear Pat McAfee's motherfucking opinion on this. Okay, like mm-hmm. th- this is not something that I think people think that. I just want to let you know that this is something that I think we should all know 
somehow passed. Yeah. I guess there was a settlement with these concussions, and this happened way back in the day. Not way back in the day, but like seven years ago, eight years ago, there was a lawsuit of former players. As the more science came out, as Dr. Will Smith and the concussion movie came out and CT became a thing, there was a lot of lawsuits from a lot of ex-players who felt like the NFL, uh, you know, didn't really look out for them after, now that they're making so much money. And that very valid argument, by the way. And the ex-players should also, you know, maybe take a little aim at the NFLPA as well, who's supposed to potentially represent them and all players forever instead of, but whatever the case, there was a lawsuit with the concussion thing. The settlement, I guess, came out, there was a clause in there where you'd have to get tested for your cognitive function and in there somehow agreed to by the NFLPA, I believe it was doing the lawsuit and the NFL a lot of lawyers, a lot of people in powerful positions, I'd assume, especially with something of this magnitude, got it passed. It was like, uh, I guess it said in there, if if they're a black person, their cognitive function is probably lower than everybody else. Like, this is from the article that I read. I don't know what the exact wording was. Somehow they probably lawyered it up in a, and had it do something, uh, which is what happens in a lot of contracts. But I want to let her, but that's fucking absurd. Yeah. I had no idea that that would be able to happen in the world that we're in. I understand that shit like that it happens and there's people like that out there on a daily basis. But I feel like at the world we're in right now, more people are coming together than they ever have. Now, remember George Floyd, uh, you know, the video of George Floyd, which was at nine minutes and 40 some seconds or 10, whatever it was, uh, we find out. That whole thing, I feel like that was something that really brought our world together. Like everybody was like, that's bullshit. Like, hey, that can happen. The whole world was forced to watch. Everybody's locked in inside. Everybody was forced to watch something that is, it does happen that everybody was kind of blind and ignorant to. They're like, nah, that, that can't happen. That can't happen. I was very lucky. And by lucky, I mean, I got to hear a lot of stories from people. I got a chance to go to a lot of communities, a lot of neighborhoods that maybe somebody from uh, the East Hills of Pittsburgh wouldn't go to, whether it's in South Florida or anywhere else that I've, I've gotten a chance to go to and hear stories and kind of see stuff. And then, you know, because I felt like that kind of helped me. And that, by the way, that helps the locker room come together. Whenever you learn about things, you kind of become a tighter group. I feel like George, the George Floyd sad situation, by the way, sad situation. I feel like that brought a lot of people together. Okay. Then obviously protests, riots, yep. everything. There was a distraction automatically. Instead of listening to each other, it became a no. All of a sudden, everybody's against each other again. It was like, damn it. I feel like we were for the first time in a long time, very, 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 very close. And then now that you read about this, it's like, God damn, there's no, how does that get passed? How is that? Okay. I, I've never read a book in my life. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not proud of it. Just something that I have gone this far doing and I did not graduate from college I did not graduate high school with honors who says that my cognitive function which I'm not is anywhere higher than anybody else my enroll is a fucking PhD yeah okay yeah. so it's just like I feel like the fact that that got okayed by people you know in, in the people that are normally by the way saying that they're fighting against us they had to okay that as well to get in there and that's why this whole story is servicing because the lawyer said I, I know now what I agreed to it was like are you fucking kidding me? That is just, that's the big story in the NFL today. And it should be, by the way, because this is like a, uh, this is a life thing. Like, yo, come on. We can act as if, you know, maybe some shit was, ah, blah, blah, blah. this is crazy. And I, whoever decided to do this has to make it right. I hope they get it right. And let's move forward. Because the NFL, I believe, is a unifier yep. of people, mm -hmm. you know, and, and there has been politics that have been brought into that whole thing. And obviously that got brought in because of a, a potential cry for help and then a fight. And then, uh, you know, there was there was nasty things said. OK, Very, and they yeah. never came together, never, mm -hmm. ever came together. But I feel like the NFL truly is a unifier. And when something like this happens, it's like, God damn, why is it happening here? I don't like it. I don't like being associated with it. And hopefully we'll get this whole thing fixed, man, because it is that was wild to read about. That was fucking Insane. wild to read about. Well, and to your point, like, I mean, it's it's not right and it's terrible. But if you were to read like uh, agreed upon in like 1960, something like that, it'd be like, OK, okay well, right. shit was different back then. Like people were openly very racist and stuff like that. But to, to see that it was signed in, you know, 2013 or whatever, it's like, God damn, that really isn't that long ago. Yeah. So we got a long way to go. Let's do that. Let's enjoy this life. Let's be nice to 
to people. And let's remember that we're all in this motherfucker together, okay? And whatever happens to all of us on this rock is going to happen to all of us on this rock. Let's go ahead and try to enjoy this whole thing. Um, that was a bummer to read about, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That really was. I mean, at least like... I was like, hey, just... hey, hey, these people never talked to me. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I don't know what whites you were talking about in the league, but <laughs> you didn't have a conversation with me. That would have changed this whole thing probably pretty quickly. Why didn't... You should have sent me in there for that thing. Let's well, change the standard a little bit, but I mean, at least it's being brought up, right? Like, the only way you can change shit like this and make sure it doesn't happen again is that it gets addressed. And I would assume a lot of people also are... Because I assume a lot of the people that have had to okay to this, by the way, have probably told a lot of other people how terrible people they are. Yeah. You know, and I think that's kind of the uh, that's kind of the issue with everything mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is it exists. We got to change it. But also there's a lot of hypocritical folks potentially happening as well. Just buy into this thing and just be in it together. Let's move along. By the way, I, I hope that gets fixed. I, I, apparently it is. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not 100 percent sure, but that's fucked up. Yeah, that is not great. Insane. Uh, Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens were back on the practice field. Ooh. Hey, let me tell you what. Sammy Watkins okay, was with the Kansas City Chiefs. Success story whenever he was there. Buffalo, unbelievable, out of Clemson. Went to the Rams, I think, or Chargers or something like that. This guy, awesome guy. Yeah. He's given a couple of interviews, deep thinker. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it seems like all of his teammates have loved being teammates with him. Makes big plays, incredibly talented. The Baltimore Ravens were in the wide receiver market with everybody. They made offers to Juju. Juju went back to Pittsburgh. They made offers to T.Y. T.Y. went back to Indy. Now, is that because of salary cap and a lot of people are taking one-year deals? Possibly. But the Baltimore Ravens were in the wide receiver market. Sammy Watkins joins the Baltimore Ravens. Here we go. Hollywood Brown, who said last year the offense may be getting a little predictable. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, why do you even have uh, dogs if you ain't going to use them or something like that? Ever. In in parentheses, never. And then Lamar said the offense. So you bring in Sammy Watkins. At least we've got another weapon. Got a couple of tight ends. Here we go. How we doing? Let's keep it moving. The Baltimore Ravens social team has provided us with a clip of Lamar Jackson and Sammy Watkins connecting for a big reception. And if you're a Ravens fan, you're like, hey, crab cakes in football? That's That's what what Maryland Maryland does. does. Wait until you see playoff football, crab cakes, Lamar Jackson... Sammy Watkins, and it doesn't matter how the ball gets there, Boston Connor. Uh, This ball that they put on their social media was asking for Lamar Jackson to get buried. I I mean, it was a windy day over there. Nobody's talking about how windy it was. Was it? It was. What? And then Foxy slows it down. Hey, Foxy. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, Foxy, take it down, dude. dude. Sammy Watkins must have massive hands. That is a tough ball to catch. But we are not having any conversation about how windy it was there. And Peyton Manning was mocked and ridiculed for having a wobbly ball. Peyton Manning said, threw a lot of wobbly touchdowns too, pal. How about it? This guy was an MVP. All right? Absolutely. This guy was an MVP. If the ball gets there, the ball gets there. But let's not mock and ridicule one particular pass that we just saw on Twitter, will we please? For sure, but I mean, you can see in the background here, those trees aren't blowing you know, over. (laughs) Sturdy trees! Whatever wind factor there is. Now, Baltimore's on the bay. Listen, Baltimore's on the bay. Of course. So those trees, the roots... You yeah. know what roots are doing? They're deep. They're they're searching for water. Mm-hmm. They, those are deep roots. Absolutely. Those trees are sturdy. Those leaves don't blow, pal. Okay. Those things say they're saying thirty to forty five mile an hour winds there. I just checked the weather. It was not like that at well, all. Well, you don't okay. know. Yeah. <laughs> thirty. <laughs> you meteorologist. You know. Uh, you ain't no. Joe DiNardo, pal. Uh, yesterday was southwest six mile per hour winds. Oh, the day before that was okay. five mile. He was throwing it. Northwest. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, northwest. 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 Multiply by northwest. three, yeah. four. You're looking at 25 El mile an hour Nino. winds. See, just a quick okay. question, though. Whenever it says it's blowing, it's coming from the south. By the way, kicker, punter, had to worry about the winds on a very regular basis. They used to tell me what the winds were and what the stadium alignment was. Still don't have it figured out. <laughs> Okay, so are the winds coming from or blowing to whenever they say something? I think coming, coming from. from. Okay, so if it's coming from the southwest, you would not want to throw southwest then. Correct. Because then you're throwing right into the wind. Yeah. Exactly. It's not going to the southwest. Like, it's not blowing to the southwest. I don't mm. think so. I don't know. I just remember getting in the stadiums going, oh, it's fucking going that way. Yeah, just toss some grass. It's going that, well, that's, in the stadiums, it's very different. The wind on the field... 
is different than the wind in the sky. Yeah. And the wind in the sky is different than the wind on the uprights. So those little things you see, the flags, I mean, they matter for sure because you're going to find out what's going to happen at the very end. But, man, they could tell a very different story than what's yeah. going on, like, just 10 yards in front of that, 15 yards in front of that. And if the, uh, if a stadium is, what is that, whenever they reflect each other perfectly? Concave? No. Parallel. No, parallel is running next to each other. Mm. Perpendicular is a T. Oh, yeah. Whenever something perfectly Mirrored? mirrors itself, though, but whenever it's called something. That is called something. When you're, it's like a... It's not a, it's mm. not a palindrome. That's paradox? a word. No. No. A paradox is a satire, but a sentence. Yeah. I think. I know the word. I, I just know. Can't. Yeah. What is it? It is something. Anyways, when a when a stadium is perfectly matched on both sides. Reflecting. No, that that is something. <laughs> yeah. the mirrored is something uh-huh. as well. Symmetrical. Yeah. yeah, there it is. Yeah. There it is. There it is. is yeah. that what it is? Yeah. I don't know. I think so. So whenever a stadium is symmetrical, okay, so when it's the same on this side as it is on this side, That's it. what's happening on the bottom, it's going to happen the opposite on the top. Okay, so if it's blowing cross field on the bottom, at the top it's blowing the other direction, right? So that's like a quick little, but if it has a, a non-symmetrical stadium, Ooh, ah. a asymmetrical Obviously, yeah. right. <laughs> for those that don't understand, A can be substitute with non in the Latin form. Mm-hmm. So the asymmetrical stadium, whenever there's like an open end, that completely changes everything. Yeah. Then it's a full guessing game. For instance, Lucas Oil Stadium, you know, a story just came out from Andrew Brandt. He said that uh, Adam Vinatieri was going to be a Packer, and then he signed with the Colts because the Colts had a dome, mm-hmm. right? And everybody calls us a dome team, dome team. And in putting kicking game, it is a little bit of a slight or whatever. Still got a bomb balls, though, but it's still a little bit of a slight. Right. The RCA Dome, which is what Vinny, I think, signed up for whenever he became a Colt, that thing was like a hockey arena, nice and tight in there, dead air. Now, with that being said, you don't have any wind at your back either at any time, which never gets calculated into anything. There were some stadiums you get to. It's like, okay, for at least two quarters here, I'm going to hit a kickoff into the stands. Yeah. Now, those other two quarters are going to be tough, but <laughs> I am going to get a little bit of a boost. Everybody's a little bit negative in that thing. But whenever Lucas Oil Stadium, whenever you know Jim Irsay uh, just hits the button and the window comes down, mm-hmm. and then he takes his rag to, uh, a rag top off the top, oh, yeah. that thing just becomes this bowl. And it's like in warm-ups, punters and kickers will come over immediately, and they go, uh, we open this thing today or we're keeping it closed? It's like, we have no say in this. And by the way, <laughs> They might do it four minutes before the game starts. You have no idea. And, and like older punters and kickers be like, okay, younger guys are scared to ask because I think they don't think anybody will answer. But like older guys will ask. And I'll be like, definitely want to go this way, but there's a chance that that thing's going to be coming yeah. all different ways. And at halftime against a guy who had to play in there, he was like, uh, this is the most confusing place of all time. And I'm like, yeah, because we have these big – you know, there's a AFC finalist. Oh, yeah, oh, the banners. <laughs> yeah. banners. There's banners hanging at the top. And those things are just blowing where the window is. And then on the ground, you're feeling it just like hitting you in the face somewhere. And it's like you just have to play a guessing game. That's what happened with that Lamar Jackson pass. Yeah. Okay, he's seeing southwest winds six miles an hour or whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's on the ground, pal. How about where he's throwing to Sammy Watkins, six That's foot right. three, six foot four uh, feet in the, in, the, in the air there, pal? Absolutely. But if this is the ball they're posting, I mean, what are his other throws looking like? That's because... a, hey, the internet did say that. <laughs> they, that must be the first play of the OTAs, by the way. Mm. That's the first play. They had a hundred other opportunities that they could have put up there. This is what they chose to put up there. Lamar's all the way back. Sammy Watkins is a weapon. Hollywood Brown. But it does feel like the Ravens social media team set Lamar up for a little bit of a negative conversation around his throwing. That's what I just assumed it was some doofus on the social media team. I mean, you can't tell me they didn't have a rep that looked better than that. There's no way. Great, Great comment there. And let's talk about doofus. Okay. Oh, yeah, we should. Let's talk about doofy. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, uh, which you're saying that social media guy doofus or whatever. <laughs> we did not say this. Nope. I cannot stress this enough. I, Pat McAfee, did not say what we are about to say. Connor. Nope. I did not say what we were about to say. Ty. I did not say what we're about to say. Zito. I did not say it. Nick. I did not say what we're about to say. Jason. I didn't say it. We hired the biggest doofus of all time to be our head coach. <laughs> yeah. Put it in quotes. Who said it? That line. Oh, no. 
out. Easy. Evan, Evan, Sell out. Evan Fox oh, said it. Fox Sell out. out. Said. Motor City Dan Campbell had an electrifying press conference this morning where he showed up wearing a race helmet. Yeah. Okay. He is the marshal at the Detroit Grand Prix IndyCar <laughs> race this yep. weekend. Mm -hmm. He had his helmet on, was answering questions so much so that it was fogging up, you know what I mean? Everybody's pumped about what MC <laughs> DC is bringing to Detroit. And Foxy, now Foxy might have said, did we hire? You know, he might he might have put it as a uh, question. No, I believe he said Sheila Ford hired. No. 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 Easy. Yeah. All right. Foxy, he, this guy said he loved you. Uh, I, love him. Right. He I love him. No, that's not what you were saying earlier. What, what, are you starting to question this guy? Why are you uh -oh. Why are you falling off on your love for MC? This is, I love him more now. Yeah. I love him more now too. This is one of my favorite moves of all time. He looks incredible out there. And guess what? I bet the people of Detroit absolutely love this move. Oh, but that's how you were what saying earlier. No, you? you guys are putting words in my mouth. No, no we're not. We literally everybody in the room said we we knew exactly what okay. was coming. Maybe I might have called him a doofus, but that was out of love, all right? I've been a doofus before. You've been a doofus before. Uh, We've all been doofuses mouth, huh? before. <laughs> <All right? laughs> I love this guy. He's awesome. Uh, he's. I do love MCD. So. Yeah, he knows one speed, and that is full speed ahead. And that's why he's in the Indy car. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. He, Grand Prix this he week. don't slow down. Him wearing the helmet to the press conference, though. There had to be a decision made. Mm-hmm. I wonder if anybody else was involved. <laughs> I wonder if he just put that thing on. I was like, strap it up. Let's go. They just said, wear this, man. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where'd he get it? They I, must have sent it to him. I, who knows? Maybe he sent somebody to go buy one. Like, yeah, hey, yeah. hey, go buy a, a, a race car helmet, an Indy car helmet. Where am I supposed to do that? I don't know. Figure it out. I got a press conference at noon or whatever. Yeah. Get your fucking ass out. <laughs> get on it now. Please go get on it. They drive around to wherever dicks or played against sports. I would assume you would have to find <laughs> it. I'm not Bike even, shop. <laughs> I'm not even sure. Do you think it was stuck on? He just couldn't take it off? I, I would assume he did have to have the X or double XL. It's been four <laughs> days <laughs> since he's taken <laughs> it off, actually. I believe I saw him. I need a food tube. Oh. Yeah. This guy is the fucking best. I hope he... A lot of people underneath the photo of it going... Oh, here we go. Foxy yeah. saying he's an upgrade over Ted Lasso. Yeah, wow. Yeah, 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 Ted right, Lasso, pal. one of the greatest coaches of all time. Motor City Dan Campbell about to be that. Yeah, and right. If if Ted Lasso season two is anything like season one, we're talking maybe greatest series of anything in the history of anything. Of all time. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. And Foxy's like, let's go ahead and upgrade that. <laughs> Motor City Dan Campbell. It's real life Ted Lasso. Hey, this is something that. What if he wins? A lot of people going, oh, there's a there's a coach wearing a helmet to a press conference is going to go 4-13. and 13. I saw that on Twitter. <laughs> Whoa. People were saying on Twitter. It, that. Hey, people were taking shots at Dan Campbell. I don't think he deserves it. No. Foxy, Foxy did. did I did not take a shot at I, Dan Campbell. I am a pro Dan Campbell guy. Mm -hmm. Super, too. super MCDC guy. Mm -hmm. Love him. Mm -hmm. Hard not to be. The Everybody it, loves a big doofus. I, okay. Easy. That was Nick. Easy. See, that's that's low hanging fruit. We <laughs> talked to MCDC. He's a deep thinker. Yes. He is. I think he's actually just like Ted Lasso. You know what I mean? Thank you. Master motivator, mm -hmm. leader. How you doing? Keep it moving. Hiring all ex players. Let's make this place uh, a good place to work. Let's compete. Let's have alphas. Let's make this a pride. Let's get a fucking real lion. You know, this mm -hmm. guy. Bring in Megatron. He could change everything. Vrabes, you know, goes in there to Tennessee. He has a couple Super Bowls, obviously, as a player. Has caught touchdowns and played on the defense side of the ball. Boxing gloves out. He's punching Derrick Henry. He's wearing the pad. Everybody, nobody really gives Vrabes a lot of credit, right? Vrabes has won a playoff game. Mm -hmm. He's got that Titans team in a position to continue to have, you know, success. Made a coaching change or a quarterback change yeah. that nobody even talks about anymore because Tannehill has worked out so much. That could have backfired on him. He's made a lot of great moves, great coaching. Seems like he is like, uh, hey, I'm in the locker room, but I'm the guy that has to make the decisions. Like, it's working there. If MCDC, you know, he wins, what, six, seven games? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? In Detroit, can... lock him down for 10 years up there. We already got him for six. You know what? I just can't <laughs> wait. I cannot wait for that first win. That first win is going to be the most electric thing of all time. Foxy and I were talking about this the other day on our drive, uh, I think, over to the Thunderdome. Yep. Yeah. That first win when they give him a game ball. Oh my God. Oh, she <laughs> Ford Hamp. She's gonna, yeah. He's gonna have to give her one. And then he's gonna go, hey, this one goes to uh Sheila Ford Hamp first win or whatever as owner. Here you go. Congrats. This one goes to GM. Hey, this guy, he's got all of us. We're proud of Nice job, Brad. 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 Brad man. <laughs> <laughs> so he's gonna give that. And then clap's gonna stop. 
Sheila is going to have a ball. And she's going to go, this one goes to, you know who, MC. DC. First win, hands the ball. That speech. I just got chills. Oh, my yeah. God. We talked about in the car. We were literally sitting at a red light. And we just thought of MCDC painting a picture of all the doubt that people oh. had and then the win and then the new, the new leaf that's going to be turned in Detroit and what mm. the Lions are going to become. That speech is going to be one that I can't wait for. A lot of people on the internet saying I'm going to have to wait maybe 13, 14 weeks. <laughs> no, they don't know. I'm saying early. I'm just telling you what the internet is saying around here. I'm saying early he's doing he it. He 100% th- sheds tears in that speech. I hope oh, so. Hey, he will. I'll just know. Yeah. I mean, I've been pounding the 4 and 13 drum, but... When you think about Goff, if he has a good old line, he can sling the rock, and they got a massive old line over there. Oh, yeah. And they, uh, Penne, yeah. who is mauler, has said it is a little bit more challenging than I thought to just bounce over here right, <laughs> yeah. right tackle. Maybe he's underselling it though. Mm-hmm. And they got sure. Rag now, the dude playing with a broken neck. Yeah, I mean, come on. And I think you got um, uh, Mule back back for another year. Oh yeah, he's back. Long snapper. Mm-hmm. He's been there twenty one years. That yeah. guy ain't never seen a playoff game win. <laughs> Him and Jason Hansen might suffer the same exact fate, never win in a playoff game. No, Motor City Dan Campbell's going to change that. They do not have their top two receivers for the past, like, five years, I believe. Which That's going to be tough. My yeah, hurts. Yeah, but Jared, Goff, Jared Goff can find. Jared Goff can Couple find guys. holes. Jared you know Goff can hand the ball McVeigh's. off. We got awesome. Dan Orlovsky called the Lions offensive line a top five line in the league, all right? Whoa. We can just hand it off every Dan time. Orlovsky said that? Whoa. Dan Orlovsky said that. I didn't know Dan said that. Mm-hmm. If Dan said that? It's gospel. All right, let's get to a break. Okay. Fucking put it to bed. <laughs> Holy yeah. shit. That's awesome. The Lions are going 10-7. 1-8-3-3-4 McAfee will answer some calls on the other side. I think we're going to have a guy join us. Ooh. Here we go. I think. We might. Uh, I don't know. Okay. I have no idea. Well, AJ said he was booking, so. Oh, yeah. I think we got a. Uh... No, nah, we'll let him do it. Yeah. He booked him. <laughs> nice. Pretty big guest coming tomorrow. Oh, let's hey. go. Uh, we're going to wrap up this week with a big old guest. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hey, we're talking big old guest. Nice fucking eyes. Mm-hmm. But a big, big fucking, fucking guest. guest. Hell yeah. <laughs> we're back in four minutes. This is the Pat McAfee Show, Thursday, June 3rd, 2021. Cheers. Is the MCDC name tag then? Because it's a long time. ACDC. Do you hate it? Do you love it? We gotta. I feel like we potentially offended you after finding out you're a diehard Metallica guy and we call you MCDC. No, 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 no. Listen, I love classic rock as well. So. <laughs> no, I, just, I don't strike you as a numbers guy. Like no, you. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, whenever I heard you, I was just like, you know what? I'm not 100% sure this guy is just going to be listening strictly to the analytics guy. I just kind of a feel like. Listen, I got through a distant subtraction. I'm just, <laughs> oh, oh. But the alpha comment was really, I wasn't directing that just at myself. I was saying that. That's Brad, too. Brad's an alpha. That's our coaching staff. I mean, let me say this about our coaching staff. One of the reasons I made the hires that I did with these guys, I know you'll probably end up asking this, was because just coming out of this COVID, I wanted to make sure we had more flexibility for the roster. And if these coaches need to play, Maybe a couple of games. <laughs> so, so, you know, not everybody's thinking that way. <laughs> All right, it seems like every three, four years, the Lions get a new head coach. It seems like the rebuilding process has been happening my entire life. 26 years old, and I've never seen a playoff win for the Detroit Lions. So I want to know how you and your coaching staff plans to make this one different. Yeah, look, first of all, I think I love Foxy, man. <laughs> i tell you what, I love the optimism that he brings. Um, look, I, I would say this to me, the short answer is, is Sheila Fordham. If you want hope, she's the one who's bringing the hope. Because I had put a serious thought in this as I was hiring my staff. I was, I was thinking about hiring you to see if you would like to be, you know, uh, our special teams coach. And, and then I thought, you know what, just, I know you doing this radio, it softened you up a little bit. I chose not to. All right, I hate to say that, Pat. <laughs> Um, I needed to just let that be known. Well, I want to let you know, true alphas know when to hang them up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dan
Come on. Come on. Stay loud, ref. Ladies and gentlemen, with the match ending in the first round, your winner by technical knockout, Thank you. the hey. red corner. <laughs> Woo! Fuck you, buddy. You too. You did it. You did it. Yeah. Am I the greatest Oculus boxer of all time? Possibly. But getting punched in the actual face is much different than the fake shit. So I'll continue to go in here, battle against these jabrones, and keep it moving. I am tired though, even though it was quick. This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. You all know by now that this particular office, there are a lot of offices in the land. Plenty. This particular office. Ooh. Hey, DJ Griff, you a fool for this one. Yeah. Damn again. <laughs> this particular office is powered by Celsius. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Celsius is the premium alternative to traditional... <laughs> Celsius is the premium alternative to traditional energy drinks. Better for you and better tasting. It has zero sugar and is made with premium ingredients like ginger. What? Green tea. What? And guarana. None of the bad stuff, just the essential energy you need. Celsius was created to help people live fit, exceed their goals, and elevate their everyday lives. We have them in the office and love them. Head to Celsius.com forward slash buy dash locate to find Celsius near you today. That's C-E-L. S-I-U-S dot com forward slash B-U-Y dash L-O-C-A-T-E. It is a lot. You go into a gas station, it'll probably be there. Mm -hmm. If it isn't, go to that website, find where they are, and absolutely experience the majesty of Celsius. Yeah! It is delicious. It's tough to find the uh, heat. If you find the heats, hang on to them. The diesels? Mm -hmm. Buy all of them. Because it's not just a heat, it's more like a cheat to oh. your day. Yeah. Nice. Holy. Thank you. You know, those ones are good. They taste delicious. They do. Mm -hmm. But I'm a guzzler. Mm -hmm. So the littler ones, you know, standard size, what is that, 12, 12 ounces? 12 ounces. Absolutely. Yep. That thing's gone. It's gone very quick. That yeah. thing's gone because yeah. it tastes so good. Bingo. And the crash on this is not bad, by no. the way. No. You will feel your energy at the end of the day die off, but you're not just like dying like most energy drinks. I was on an energy drink kick a couple falls ago. Oh, yeah. I had to quit it cold turkey. I thought my entire body was going to crash. That was oh. bad. We were doing three, four of those a day. Yeah. Don't need to do that many of these because this carries you through the day. And also, the crash and everything that feels inside is nowhere near. And it tastes fucking delicious. Yeah, it, it, they're so good. It's hard not to chug these like Nate Burleson, you know, chugging a water. One sip away, dude. Yeah. He chugged an Essentia bottle. And I don't have a deal with Essentia. But I was wondering if he was going to start like a chug of water bottle trend. Okay. Oh. And as somebody who retired the chug because I don't want to have to chug 30 beers every time I'm in public. Right. Uh, which started to happen. A nice water chug <laughs> You'll chug a water Would though. be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Good yeah, idea. Open that thing up. That'd be great. Uh, but I'm not doing I would Nate love Nate. Mm -hmm. Fuck off, Essentia. I know nothing right. about you. Mm -hmm. Your water's probably delicious. Oh, sure it is. It looked good. It was nice a good bottle. bottle. Yeah. yeah. It's the stuff AJ's always drinking, too. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's what those super high athletes do. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Those high, high. Living yeah. in the villas. For highfalutin. Yeah. Well, not highfalutin. High talent. Oh, well, AJ's cool. a highfalutin guy, so I didn't know if that's what you were. He'll be joining us in 24 minutes. He booked a guest for us tomorrow, I think. Let's go. Let's okay. go to Jorge in Georgia. What's going on, Jorge? Yes, how you doing there, sir? Not too shabby. How are you? Uh, yeah, what I would like to do is uh, I have an opinion on what I think Aaron should do. Okay, I like I think that. He should come into he should come into camp, be the most polite person he can be, 
And whenever he has to uh, talk to the media in his most politest way, just, you know, say, I do not have a owner like the other, uh, you know, 31, uh, you know, quarterbacks do. So I don't have nobody. I can say that my general manager have put me in the worst situation ever and that uh, he's just totally incompetent. And that's the reason why I want to leave. Okay, I appreciate that, Jorge. Yes. The thought of him sitting down, you know, going through practice, uh, you know, suck at signs mm-hmm. and everything, sitting down. Aaron, do you have anything you'd like to talk about uh, everything happened? Great question. Um, Domofsky, I assume. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great question. Uh, yeah, you know, pretty good off season. I don't know if you saw we're in Hawaii. Uh, scary situation when having a Miles Teller. Mm-hmm. He's okay. Jumped off a waterfall. Got to learn a lot about myself. Hosted Jeopardy. I loved it. You know, got to watch a lot of film. And I'm in a really good spot. Love the guys. Love the team. Love the practice. Uh, the thing about it all is, you see, we don't have an owner here. So whenever you got fucking idiots, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what if he did just Oh, wait? man. Oh, my. If he did that today, that'd be great. That'd be like that something for be. us he to talk about. Right now. But Jorge is on to something there down there in Georgia. What if Aaron just... You know, does the whole, hey, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Good to be here. Live mic. All right. But before they get their side out, okay, and spin this however they want to spin, which we're already kind of doing, you know, with the whole we've tried our best. Mm-hmm. Let me go ahead and let you know. I'm back because of my teammates. My I'm, guys. I'm back because of, you saw that look on Matt LaFleur's face when he had to talk about what this offense was going to be with it. I'm back because of that. With that being said, Still not happy with the people that have their offices right there. What a moment that would be. Domovsky would have so many follow-ups. Yeah, oh, yeah. Schneidman would get in the game. Mm-hmm. I mean, that would be that'd be awesome. He's not going to do that, Jorge, but I guess we can fantasize. I don't know how that whole thing ends, honestly. I have no idea how. As- like, yeah, like, without it being... It's only awkward if you make it awkward, mm-hmm. right? That is a life motto that you can take with you, and you should think about maybe a little bit deeper whenever sports stooges aren't talking to you about dumb things. It's only awkward if you make it awkward. Always will be, always has been. Should be awkward for some people. They don't make it awkward. They don't know it's awkward. It's not awkward. This one, I don't know how you just, like Pete Carroll, Russell Wilson. That's going to have to happen at some point. Somebody's oh, yeah. going to ask about that, that offensive line. This one, I, how do they non-awkwardly move on? How do they A, awkwardly, you uh, know, move on without really, you know, I don't know. I don't, I'll don't. i be excited to watch, but I'm not 100% sure. I think it's past the point of that. Uh, I think, like, as as this has rolled on more and more, I just get the feeling that this is like the like Brady's last year in New England, kind of. Like, he yeah. knows already, like, okay, I'm, I'm gone after this year, but I am going to play this year. Like, there's no chance for a long-term extension, I don't think. Like, I think that ship has And sailed. by the way, we don't know. We have to. Yeah, no nothing. No but idea. I just assume, like, as more and more has happened, and it's like, okay, nothing has happened. We haven't really heard anything for, about it. The Packers are adamant they're not going to trade him. It just feels like he's going to go back. He'll play this year, and then he'll be gone before the start of next year. And what did, um, by the way, I think that's a very well-thought-out, sound, rational take from an owner of the Green Bay Packers. Mm-hmm. Speaking of owner of the Green Bay Packers, since you can't do this, what did Robert Kraft and Bill and Tom do? Didn't he say he invited him in his living room yeah, and he sat, sat him down? Oh, yeah, before the uh, 2018 season. Before they like go a, and win the Super Bowl. Uh-huh. Bef- that last year. That was, I assume there was some awkwardness mm-hmm. between Bill and Tom. Kraft sits him down and goes, boys, listen, we've made a lot of money together, all of us. A lot. Can we just do one more thing here? And they do a spite season. Mm-hmm. They win the Super Bowl. He moves on. What are you doing, Green Bay? This is yet again another thing. Where is the, there's no one power. Like, I guess Mark Murphy is. Is he considered that? But, it, man, I, this is exposing that whole not having an owner thing. I've said it numerous times, and Packers fans don't like to hear it or whatever, but I'm just trying to look at it from a realistic situation. If any of the other owners were involved in this situation, how would it have gone? Now, now granted, if you got uh, McNair and Easterby, I mean, we, oh. that, because that's the ownership group down in Houston. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Jesus, Jack, and McNair right. uh-huh. are the ownership group. How would they handle it? Yeah, that obviously that before we learned about a lot of alleged incidents that are disgusting. By the way, and if they're real, if it comes to be true, and he's guilty, we want maximum justice. Not good for the league. Not good to be associated with that. If he's not, hope he and that gets as much coverage as well and gets to move on. But he was not happy there. Russell Wilson was not happy. I assume the owner. Maybe stepped in and said something down there. I would assume at some point. Kraft tried to. I think Green Bay not having an owner and having one overall. Because 
what do they say? You got too many cooks in the kitchen or yeah. whatever. You got too many. If there's one voice, you know, at least you know, like, okay, that's the person that's deciding. With this, it's like, well, there's a team, there's a couple people, there's this, and it's like, well, if you feel like you're battling against those people, is there any independent potential that could come in and say, hey, let's pull our swords aside? And that's what Robert Kraft did with Bill and Tom. They got a Super Bowl out of it. I wonder what's going to happen with this one. Yeah, it just there, there is no situation for that. You know what I mean? Like, should be it, us, dude. It, should be us. We yeah. should go in there. I'd love to mediate, but you know, I don't know if the Packers would want. I think they think it might be a little one-sided. Oh, you're biased. And I'm a little biased. Uh, but yeah, there's just so that, and that is why I think it's just like okay, I haven't, but I haven't been traded yet. I don't think he's going to retire, so I'll just go back. I'll play. I'll ball out, and then I'll get the fuck out of there next year. Uh, I, I'll ask AJ this because he knows it a lot better than us. Is Aaron always like a world traveler in the offseason? I think, I think so, so right? yeah. Like he travels, he, he experiences, he jumps Aaron, off waterfalls. Like I, I think we're getting to see a lot of what he's doing in the offseason. I think this is normal or whatever. But I'm also going to ask AJ, like, you know, being a football player, you have to be like, okay, I'm a football player. Like you, you have to think about it. You know what I mean? You have to invest in it. Aaron is a super competitive guy. He said the reason why he loves the NFL is because of how competitive it is. I wonder, and there's a lot of people talking on TV and they don't know shit either. None of us know anything, mm-hmm. but they're like, is he, is he still invested in football because of the personal potential, um, shit going on with people i don't know nick what do you have remember la- when we talked to him last year and right before all the pandemic started he told that story about getting caught and i think it was either costa rica or panama and and rushing to get on the plane before they shut the country down oh yeah and then he got yelled at by people whose family yeah. were in uh whatever country it was because he didn't load everybody up onto his plane in yeah. the middle of a pandemic Take us with you. <laughs> but he had to run out i think yeah, yeah. no it was like an emergency uh literally departure. yeah got out of there right before they shut the country down yeah Nobody talks about me and Foxy in New Orleans. No. Getting out <laughs> three days before. Yeah, we and Fox were Seriously. down in New Orleans. Like two, I think it was two days before yeah, yeah. New Orleans got locked down, I think, or, or somewhere else. Like we were yeah. we were potentially biodomed out of our town there for a bit yeah. at the beginning of that thing. Had no idea. No clue. Allegedly, New Orleans was a hot spot back then, too, because, you know. Uh, Mardi Gras is still happening. And Bourbon Street yep. is a collection of people oh, yeah. from all over the world. So they're thinking that was potentially it. So. We were down there walking around doing our thing right before that. We were in New York in 2019 fall. Yep. Just fall into winter. In mm-hmm. in the um in like the, the epicenter. Right. Yeah, in the world trade area. Yeah. World area. Mm-hmm. I mean, we we were trying to dance with COVID as much as possible there. Yeah. We beat it. We did. Hey. Yes. Dance pretty well with it. Hey. Indianapolis, obviously the only city who has not said that by the fall. We'll be able to have full stadiums, okay? Ooh. Mayor Hogg said here hasn't seen enough numbers. <laughs> My comments about that yesterday caused uh, quite a conversation around town. A lot of people asking me to uh, keep going. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about time. I mean, just, yeah. I'm not going to. I'm just going to say, hey, hey, dude, I appreciate you looking out for everybody so much. So much so that like, every business got ruined in town. The city got shut down, basically, and, and ruined and everything like that. But just, you know, a little bit of, hey, Colts football's around the corner. We're going to be able to fill that thing up like the other 31 teams have been able to do. That would have been a cool day. That would have been a cool day. Pretty sweet. That would have been pretty sweet yeah. for the constituents. Big morale boost. But instead, now he's saying, no, wait till we can absolutely lock it down and say we can. Then we'll have our own party. And I, I like that if that's his idea. I, just, I haven't heard that from him, but I, I do like that that's his potential idea yeah, hog said come on my fucking city yeah full stadiums fix those goddamn potholes uh, just keep going that's yeah, never gonna happen that's never gonna happen this place is the moon pal all mm-hmm. right that's why i got that jeep <laughs> smart yeah. you know what i mean everybody's that's like right. you can climb you can climb trails with that jeep i'm like well, you should see downtown indianapolis yeah right outside the office even domino's try and they stopped right at the, like the state border they turned right around yeah domino's whenever they're paving potholes so that you could get home your food faster or cleaner or whatever mm-hmm. they send locations they got so many requests from indianapolis they turned it around and said, can't do it. Can't Not help them it. all. We're done with this. <laughs> can't help them all. Can't sell any pizza there. I, I, I mean, just, that's going to be a cool day whenever it comes out that it's going to happen. It's inevitable. But the fact that he's on our time, I do like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. On my time. 137,000 people were in Indianapolis Motor Speedway the other day. Yeah. My city. My wife was there uh, with her uh, father-in-law. It's like their thing. They've gone for a long time. Yeah. I said, how was it? And she goes, I was wide open. It wasn't filled up, obviously, because they didn't sell everything, but people were just coming, moving. Obviously, they were told not to, social distance and everything, but it's hard to control 100,000 drunk people. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's not going to be an easy thing to do. And I think a lot of people walk around going, hey. Hey, you see this? Hey. I did the, I did the thing. Hey, I did the thing. Right I'm here. here. 
Let my nose breathe. I ain't wearing no fucking mask. Yeah, you see my mouth? <laughs> I did the thing. But you could be asymptomatic and you don't even know. That's a great That's point. Right. You remember? I don't yeah. want to be a carrier. No, no. Because you could be symptomatic. All right. But you could be asymptomatic, yeah. which is non-symptom like. With that being said, it's the third time in the show that has come up. <laughs> more full stadiums also in New York, as we were just, you know, referring to with the Knicks and packed house, by the way, arenas packed out. All right. So this is what I'm thinking. And it's not good for the Hawks. Let's get Trey Young, Zion Williamson to the Knicks. Okay. 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 Let's get them to the Knicks. Yes. Seems like Zion said, hey, after New Orleans, I love playing in New York. It's love it. I love Trey Young loves playing in New York. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think he absolutely, he is a monster, by the way. Gamer, <laughs> straight gamer. Love it. Took a bow last night. Oof. Got spit on. Told to, it was talking shit to an entire city basically in there. I like the, I like the way Trey Young plays basketball. I, I was at a game he was at. I watched Vince Carter the entire time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Trey Young is the show. I should have been watching him. This guy's a hell of a ball yeah, player. Absolutely. Very good. Unfortunately, if LeBron loses tonight, the NBA playoffs are a dead. Over. I ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're done. Good run. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets, they're kind of like um, their team. You know, I think the internet likes them. But I don't think a large majority of like media folks are big Nets fans, right? Because I think uh, Harden and uh, Irving yeah. and Durant all kind of have like their own like uh, – we're going to kind of go to hell, mm-hmm. which I like, by the way. Mm-hmm. The NBA is going to have to market that team like heavily if LeBron's out. They're going to have to start pushing like, hey, we have this whole thing. And what if Kyrie and Harden and Durant are like, oh, isn't that fascinating? Huh. Now, yeah. See, now you mean, oh. See a lot of Knicks fans. Oh, because just, uh, you know, just a couple months ago, um, I was an overweight guy in a strip club that you guys were talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was a bad guy in Houston. Now you want us, oh, now we're, I hope they do that, by the way. And they will. Won't be good for ratings. They won't be able to promote <laughs> Terrible. it. Terrible. But, but that team, I like that that team does not give a damn, it seems like. This is what we're doing. We're great. Everybody can eat shit. That's really the only hope that the NBA has is they build them up as either heels somehow Ooh, yeah. or put over the fact that they are unbelievable at basketball. If Braun Braun's out, Clippers are out, Knicks are out, which Knicks were had a little bit of a lot of hype actually. Yeah. You got those teams out there. And in hockey, I mean there's a lot of people out. There is hey, these playoffs, playoffs are looking dead. what's going on? LeBron knows he can't lose tonight. I actually try to get a boost on FanDuel tonight. Uh, there's no way LeBron is kicked out of the playoffs this early boost. Yeah, mm-hmm. they he, they are going to win tonight. They might yeah. get beat in seven. They this series will go to seven. Absolutely games. has as, to. As somebody that watched the Heatles play against the Pacers in some knockout games in Indiana, there were some interesting things that happened. Old Bron Bron, you know, and maybe it's because how good he was playing. You know, maybe he was finding those fouls better than he ever had on in the past. There's no way the NBA lets Braun Braun out in six. You need at no. least one more game of them. Half. And do it. we know is AD? I mean, they're being very wishy washy about. Hey, he looks pretty good. He might go tonight. I mean, hey, is the guy fucking playing or not? That's why Fanduel told me um, we can't put the boost up yet. By the way, they said because we don't know what's going to happen with the odds with Anthony Until Davis if he plays or not. So him kind of being wishy washy also hurts us directly in our pocketbook. Tony, come mm-hmm. on. Hey, AD, they need you, huh? Suit up tonight, pal. Hey, hey, they need you. They, they stink without you, pal. Yeah. Hey, uh, they're 1 in 11 without you against playoff teams. Well, and that's why Scott Foster is probably refereeing this game tonight because uh, I believe Chris Paul has lost, lost 11 straight games when he is on the floor making calls. Oh, so, really? Hey, here's a yeah. deep dot. Hey, yeah, let's so, go. No, no, don't we worry. Is he that, calling it tonight? Is that real? I'm assuming he is because they are not going to let LeBron go out in six like we're talking Which about. Which one is he? Is he the old uh, old white guy looks like a turtle? Uh, No, <laughs> that, that, that is not him. Joey Crawford, I yes. think. Okay. Yeah, he's a legend <laughs> uh-huh. in the game, by the yeah. way. He's been around a long time. Turtle, turtle. That's what he looks like <laughs> oh, out there. Yeah. But he's got good stamina. He's always running up yep. and down. Oh, yeah. shit, too. He's a little bald head running back and mm-hmm. forth. Oh, yeah. NHL's dead, too, huh? Isn't well, it? the Bruins are playing tonight. So, and once we win tonight and we, you know, regain control of the series, Pasta goes on to be the greatest player of all time, most likely. Imagine I'll when the Islanders that. beat you guys. The Pasta's out. Yeah. Sid, Ovi, McDavid, that other Canadian dude. I mean, there is just... There's no stars left in sports yeah. world. Let's go. Why is everybody letting us down? We got a daily show. We got to talk about this shit. Sports. Nathan McKinnon is the last one left. He's the last superstar entertaining player. I know you don't know who he is because I don't know the league who that stinks. Guy is. Hey, he is unbelievable. Pasta's still in it. 
He's okay. an Irish kid. This Nathan McKinnon. He's an. He's Irish. actually from the same hometown as Sidney Crosby. He's a Colorado Avalanche. Oh, of course, player. he's skating on that pond, the same pond that uh, has created the greatest hockey player of all time. Yeah, he and is a talent. I tried my best last night. <laughs> yeah. To watch the uh, Golden Knights versus the Avalanche, mm-hmm. and because you know I know you're uh, yeah, Golden Knight and Math. You know Mark Andre right. had a rough end. It was like three four a.m. or whatever. Right? from what I've heard from you. And then the Avalanche are the favorites to win the Stanley Cup. So I'm like, oh, I know nothing about this team. I'd like to watch this team too. I click over. It was that other game still. That guy was dead on the ice. Oh, oh, got slaughtered. That boy. guy, that, it, my wife and I laying in our uh, two twin beds that we got. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Cause still, that, right. That is the air mattress. The super deluxe one is actually just two blow up mattresses you would put inside of a tent <laughs> that they overcharge you for that you can lift the top back. It's it's tough to find beds right now, especially now that uh, the ship just got dumped over there. That's that we right. just we saw the whole thing, but we go over to the game or whatever, and we're laying in bed, and she uh, she goes, uh, "What's that?" And anytime you see people with shoes on on the ice, not good. Six or seven of them. Bad news. Terrible news. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's not good. That is not good at all. And a lot of people are looking around. That guy got slaughtered last night. They kind of, that came out of nowhere. Would that yeah. dude get in trouble, the guy that hit him? Or yeah, what? so Mark Shifley of the Winnipeg Jets, he has a hearing with the NHL Department of Player Safety today, which is basically like throwing a dart at a pinwheel, see where that lands. Uh, but he came flying in from center ice to stop Montreal Canadiens for Jake Eves from wrapping around into an empty net. Game was, there was like less than a minute left in the game. seconds. Yeah, like he's about to put the puck in an empty net to end the game, and Shifley comes flying from center ice. And, you know, he's flying down there to stop him from scoring, but I think at some point Shifley realized he wasn't going to be able to do that and instead made the split-second decision to just absolutely smoke Eves, and he got it. He got all of them. Evans is out. Evans, yeah, sorry, Jake Evans. Evans is out on his skates as he gets hit. Yeah. And then his lifeless body Mm -hmm. smacks off the ice. And I think that is something that does get forgotten is ice is hard. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, these guys are just falling all over these boards and on the ice. That is, that is like skull fracturing. Uh, Like ice is a problem. And it's just everything they do looks so graceful. And how do they not die every single night with the speed? And there's blades on the bottom of, like, it's just, there's weapons in the hand. The puck is going like 100 miles an hour, and that thing's hard. And then you see something like that. It's like, oh, he was out before he even hit that thing. Quarterbacks, you know, when they snap their heads off the ground, it's like the worst concussions or whatever. This guy got knocked out, and then probably another one. And he'll, pro- he'll probably try to play tomorrow if he could, this uh-huh. guy. Fucking hockey players. So I have no idea how it works. Hope he's okay. Uh, but NHL playoffs are... Uh, that's hockey, baby. That is hockey. Mm-hmm. Well, that was hockey talk. Uh, Look we got out. One minutes and 35 One minutes. <laughs> this stinks. This show's the worst. <laughs> How come there wasn't enough conversation about my Odell Beckham Jr. catch on the internet last night? Seriously. I felt like that should have been leading story in some places. That's a good point. You know what I mean? Nobody even covered it except huh. for us. Mm-hmm. What do you expect? I don't see Rich Eisen doing that. Nope. Never. Not with a bird dog's ball. No. Not with a whistle ball. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't see Dan Patrick doing it. No. By the way, I don't know how they've done what we're doing right now for like 20-some years. <laughs> Just talking about absolutely nothing. I guess they watch the NBA all the time. I try. Must. Yeah. That's the thing about the NBA. What's that? It just, it doesn't. It's tough. It does In the NHL the playoffs, the Pens were supposed to carry us for another month and a half. Yes. If the Vegas Golden Knights get knocked out, which is possible. They're dead, yeah. And the Bruins get knocked out by the Islanders, which happen. is also, what's that? That won't happen, though. So we're okay there. The Islanders are currently maybe the team that has been kissed with the most luck I've ever seen in my Going life. Going back to the Collie tonight. Oh, you yeah. guys are done. Oh, see you there. Oh, You're done for the Coliseum. We we're, you know, undefeated on the road this year in the postseason. So, but if you guys lose, what are we going to do? You know, what we're going to do. We're going to wait. Julio's going to do something next hour. Hell so yeah. is Aaron Rodgers. AJ Hawk is joining us. Other big guests can't wait to chat with them. And your phone calls one eight three three four McAfee. It is Thursday, June third, two thousand twenty one. It's a beautiful afternoon. Can't thank you enough for sharing it with us. We'll see you in about six minutes with more above average to average shit. 
you have got to experience so many things, both as a businessman off the field and on the field. Is there a moment when I ask this question, it pops your mind, like, what's the craziest shit you've ever seen in your entire life? Because there was a time there where it felt like you were just getting dropped into insane situations and the world was, like, watching you yeah. do things. Man vs. Wild, you and that Bear Grylls oh, guy, man. fucking electric. That was maybe the most electric shit I've ever seen. Is there anything that you think of whenever you think, like, what's the most ridiculous thing you've been a part of? Uh, probably some of the most ridiculous shit I've ever been a part of was... Uh... You know, I, I, I had got the uh, uh, the restaurant, which I'm in right now. And, uh, you know, when we first got it, I, you know, I would come in here and I would, you know, clean up and go outside in the front, sweep up, you know, make sure everything looked nice and shit. And uh, one morning I got up here and I noticed, you know, like, damn, this is a funky ass smell. <laughs> and I looked, you know what I mean, to the side of my front door and it's a big ass pile of shit. <laughs> And I'm talking about human shit. Yeah, and yeah. It's right on the side of the door. So I'm like, somebody then came and, <laughs> and popped the shit right in front of the door. <laughs> like, oh, this, this shit is crazy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I can't be in here serving food. Motherfucker come walk in and they smell <laughs> straight ass cheeks when they come in there. Like, I don't think that's the restaurant I need to eat in. So, man, I get the water hose and I'm hosing it down. And, you know, I see, uh, you know, we got a couple uh you know, uh, dolphins that, that usually walk back up in front. Hey, man, did you do this? Like, oh, no. Nah. So, you know, one of them owned up to it. I said, yeah, man, check it out. So you don't do this no more. Look, you come by here, we get you a, you know what I mean? We get you a broom and, a, uh, you know, you help you help us, we help you. You feel me? And, you know, we put together a little, uh, I put a proposition together for him and I ain't cleaning up shit no more. <laughs> it's a win-win. It's a win for everybody on that one. Hey, one of your Thank former you know teammates. Him. Yeah, hey, everybody wants you helping the people, man. That's awesome. That's why people love you. But hey, one, one of them owned up to it. <laughs> Just a line of questioning. The line of questioning. His the name was Willie. Up. Willie. Willie owned up to. Matter of fact, he just he just left out. He's saying sweeping up. He's like, hey, what's up? Oh, boy, I've been looking for you. You feel? Okay. Yeah, we 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 buzz down together up in the front of the uh, restaurant to get it all cleaned up and everything. Hey, you're helping people. Hey, you're help Willie went from shitting outside to working inside. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Let's go, Willie. Let's go. Give it up for my boy Willie, man. <laughs>
still on. Jay, can you hear us? Jay, is everything good back there? Listen, fuck you guys. Oh, I'm out of here. Though. I'm going over to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm going to oh. hang out with Dee Snyder and Twisted Sister. Are you serious? Okay, Jason, sorry. Hey. Thank you so much. And ladies Jeez. and gentlemen, Jason Glazer. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. Roger Goodell gave me a big hug beforehand, too. So that's good, sir. Thank you so much, Shane. You drinking? Yeah. Cheers to you, man. That was a good one. That was good. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> oh, that was I feel so like good. it went pretty good. Oh, look at the phones. <laughs> McAfee show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to that show. Hour two on this Thursday, June 3rd, 2021, with the Hammer Don Boys in studio. We'll begin right now. Also joining us from his attic in Ohio. He has an estate that sits 20,000 square feet. <laughs> Woo, nope. Moment. Moments from the golf course in which there is a tournament, I think, this weekend. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, entrepreneur, businessman, investor, college football national champion, and Super Bowl champion, the big-brained A.J. Hawk. Yeah! Yeah! Good row back, dude. Good to be with you guys. Do you know if the... uh the tournament, the memorial, it's going on right now. Is it on a rain delay? It's yes. been pouring down rain. All yeah, it's been raining over here as well. It's also raining uh, down in Tampa, apparently, I guess. there uh, is it oh, rain no. everywhere? Is it cold over there, too? I see you got the long sleeve row back three-quarters uh, sleeve thing or whatever it is, yeah. three-quarters zip. It's beautiful. That's comfortable. Shout out to you. You look good in it. They should be asking you to model on your Instagram, which is you are an influencer. Is it raining everywhere? And have we figured out, is this because of... Ooh. Is this because of the, 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 volcano, the space shuttles or the core coming out there? Is it is summer coming to you guys? It's still cold as shit over here. <laughs> it is chilly over here, AJ. How's Ohio? It, it was freezing, especially this past weekend. Like it was fifties and windy and cold and rainy. But uh, it's supposed to get really hot here. I think after it stops raining, maybe in ten weeks. Is Ohio the same way as Indiana? The sun just disappears for like five, six months. That's what happens here in Indiana. It just oh, yeah. goes, it, like winter, end of fall, winter, spring, I guess now, there's just no sun. It's just like, all right, see you later. All right, I'm going to go inside. We're going to go ahead and be quarantined uh, just because there's no sun outside. Mm -hmm. You know, make sure you take your vitamins because you're missing out on a lot of shit because there is going to be no sun for the next five months. Is it like that in Ohio as well? Yeah, I think we're, uh, we have pretty similar weather that you do over there in Indy. Are you? F yeah, you're flatter than us, I guess. No, can't no. be flatter than us. No can't be flatter no. than us over here. You like get, Cincinnati area. You go down south, there's it's more hilly. You get tornadoes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Those are scary as fucking. I mean, are we in tornado season right now? Or oh is yeah. That, We're really? in right now. Have yeah. you ever been? Have you ever seen a funnel? Have you ever seen one touch down like near you? Um, I was driving on a road. I seen the funnel. That happened, but it was off in the distance. Felt pretty comfortable because I seen Instagram videos of a guy cutting his lawn with a. You bet. Yeah, it was in Iowa. I yep. think, actually, right. with the thing. So I was like, all right. Normally, before seeing that Instagram video, I would have turned and went the other direction because I think I'm going to die. I've seen the movie Twister. Pittsburgh, there's no such thing as tornadoes. I mean, we have so many hills. It's just, I, I don't know science that well, but I don't think it's conducive to that. My first weekend in Indianapolis, though. Citywide fire alarm, everybody get in the basement. There's a, Damn. There's a tornado coming. I, I did, it didn't affect me, I didn't see it, but that is one of those things you stare at the sky and just hope it doesn't hit you. That, that you have no control at all. So that you grew up with that your whole life over there? I didn't know Ohio was a big tornado place. I mean, there's definitely, yeah, there's, uh, 
close to Dayton where I grew up, uh, I don't know how many years ago, not too long ago, it wiped out a bunch of stuff, just like flattened the whole area. This hair arena where they, I used to go watch monster truck rallies. They, Grave digger. Yeah. They monster league, uh, jam. Their oh, minor yeah. league hockey team. We used to go watch those guys fight like 15 times a game there. It's a great spot. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, that is an awesome place. The What is it? It's when cold hits hot, right? Mm-hmm. Which will be happening right now. Oh, yeah. Right all across everywhere. Do you go down? Hey, if you hear the alarm or you hear like on TV tornado warning, do you go right to the basement? <laughs> Oh, did, did you hear the, the warning? <laughs> this is what you do. This is what you're yeah, supposed to do. I mean, hopefully in the basement you'll do that. You put your head down. You tuck your head so you don't break your neck. Yeah, there it tuck is. Tuck your head right into your meat. <laughs> Jeez, AJ. <laughs> oh, you're not flexible. I forgot. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be a Tennessee volunteer, pal? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're supposed to do there. You're just supposed to get down on the ground. I That's remember right. we had to do tornado training in uh, elementary school in Pittsburgh, and even the teachers hated it. Hey, you ain't going to get no tornadoes down here, but we'll, <laughs> I guess we'll waste 10 minutes of class yeah, here. Awesome. Everybody go sit in yeah. the hallway with your backs against the lockers and just sit there. Mm-hmm. The It's real out here, though. I, I've had to go into the basement yeah. and thought I was going to die. Had to, had to grab all your cats. You know what I mean? Had uh-huh. to grab the cats. Teddy, OG cat, was... I'll come down there, but on my time, I want to tell him, hey, there's a train coming through the fucking woods right now. <laughs> All right, that, that's a scary moment. Have you ever, ever had to do it? Uh, no, we, we've we really never gone in the basement, even though people always freak out and like to do that. I mean, we always we usually sit there and look so out the cool. windows and try to find it. It's kind of just, yeah, that's what I do. I was like, kind of disappointed so, there isn't more out So here. this means you guys have never actually been close to one. Well, that's awesome. what this means. What do you in mean? seventh grade, my neighborhood was actually hit by a tornado. Did you go in the basement? Yeah, we were in the basement. All of our trees were ruined. My best friend's house absolutely destroyed. It was actually kind of a big deal. Yeah, I would assume yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> Goddamn tornado. <laughs> but the house... My house started shaking, and oh, yeah. that was when I was like, all right, I'm out of here. Yeah, it sounds like a train in the backyard. Yeah, and I said, Legit, a, I said goodbye to the house and everything. You guys, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. You guys haven't been close enough, I don't think, okay? Well, you like, guys. Like, well, no. terrifying. like you mentioned, AJ's got a 25,000 yeah. square foot house, so, you know, if a fucking yeah, right. four bedrooms get taken off, oh, no, I only got 17,000 <laughs> square feet left. Yeah, what do you got? Field. You got 10 bathrooms? You can shit all day over there, AJ? Mm-hmm. Is that the life you yeah. live? Yep, exactly. It went from 20,000 now to 25,000. So let's, let's see what it's at by the end of the show. You should see how many yards Michael Pittman had last year. <laughs> hey, there is another ever evolving thing. Hey, did you see? There's not really much to talk about, okay, AJ? Every star in every sport that is currently in playoffs is out. All right. This is a bad time. Hey, man, like, if you're carrying the the NBA playoffs, like, it's a rough time. And I, rem- I, I said this on the show. I remember, like, last time. When there's sweeps in the NBA or there's not the stars in the playoffs, people get laid off. People get fired that are at these networks. And by the way, not just the NBA. The NHL is losing all their stars as well. And the Bruins are about to get swept or knocked out. No. Yeah, the Bruins are about to get knocked out. So they're they're not... The Vegas Golden Knights are done. Yeah, uh, the, uh, Mark Andre Fleury's out. We stuff. are going back to Vegas. So eighteen thousand and one of the toughest barns in the NHL. <laughs> so we'll see. I mean, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, these sports are fucking dead, dude. It NBA feels like metal starts this week. Who? Nets and Bucks. NBA Finals starts this week. That's what I'm talking about. That's the hype machine. Is that the Eastern Conference playoff round is the finals now of the NBA? What happens when this thing ends? When the Nets just decide to sweep them 4-0? Like what happens? It's over. Completely over. They'll just have games. You guys, is this good for gambling though, Gumpy? This has to be good that all the stars are out. Is that now you know how the teams are going to be? Well, the Clippers Mavs series. It seems like like no home team has won or covered. And then the Lakers Suns has basically been a toss up. That series has bounced from like after the Lakers went up two one, they were minus three ninety to win the series. Now you can get them at plus two fifty if you think they're going to come back. Uh, Foxy Ooh. does. Foxy, don't you think the Lakers are coming back? Yeah, yeah never count LeBron James out. Yeah, hey, AD never. is AD is what questionable for tonight. Yeah. So actually, we couldn't make a boost. We said this in the first hour. I tried to make a boost. The Fanduel called him yesterday. Like, yeah, there's no way the NBA has LeBron leave six games into the first round. Can't. Like, that's not going to happen. I don't know how AD plays, though. I mean, he has a groin, right? His groin injury? I'm not sure. I saw him bouncing around on the sideline uh, last game. Was of, he, wasn't move, he wasn't making any sudden moves. The groin is tough. A lot of people don't have enough respect for the groin. Old buddy uh, in hockey has a groin. Tuca. Tuca has a groin, which goalie, by the way, they call it the butterfly stretch, or the butterfly position is the goalie. That's all groin, basically. You can't do much if your groin is pulled. It is it is something that's very difficult. It, it's just... It's the start and stop that does it. Like I know I, that's one thing. I haven't pulled many muscles, but I did. I popped my groin once, and 
it's the starting and stopping. So like I would kind of ease into it, and then once I was going, even in the game, it, it sucks. I would just keep on cruising. Like if I didn't make the tackle, I'm just jogging on by and circling back to the hot. Like, and, and, and by the way, it feels like it's going to blow every single time. Too right, yeah. doesn't? It? There's always like a fear that it's going to go. I, I can't like, imagine basketball. You know how much like back and forth and squeaking of your shoes oh, you're doing in basketball. Oh my luck. god, yeah, that's going to be difficult. They just got to give them all tour all in the world, I guess. Mm -hmm. exactly. I, I don't know if that happens in the NBA, to be honest with you. But there's no way they let LeBron lose tonight. There's, there's no way LeBron lets him lose. Is what you're saying? Oh. Yeah, 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 you're right, AJ. Of you're course, right. you're right, AJ. That that's exactly game, right. Baby. That's exactly. Thank right. you, AJ. Well, they get beat by sixty last yeah. game. Uh -huh. He had to poop. He didn't get to see the rest of it. Right. Okay. People forget. Yeah. Minus two though know. tells me AD's probably going to play. Well, yeah. that's what they think. I couldn't get a boost. I wanted to boost this game for the Lakers to win. You know, from minus one thirty four probably to plus one hundred, probably even money if I had yeah. to guess. Is but they they're waiting on to see if AD is going to play or not because that's going to change a lot of things. I guess so. It's like. Uh, Chris if Paul, he does play, Chris Paul like, left luck. the game early last yeah. game too, so he's kind of a toss up as well. He, Nobody knows how long he's going to play. Yeah, Chris Paul, by the way, is willing these teams to yeah. win. That he gets sent to the. Um, for you, let's go back to your groin injury, knees and groin. Only injuries you've had? Oh no, I've had plenty of injuries, but like, I mean, muscle pulls. Like, I, luckily, I didn't have like I never pulled a hammy. I popped my calf and I popped my groin. That's the only like soft tissue deal. How old were you with the calf? I mean, I was in like my. Fifth, sixth year in the league, maybe. I don't know. Did you miss how many games? Did you miss a lot of games? One. Wow. I did it in Detroit. I was I popped out of my stance. I was in my stance. It was the only game I've ever missed. Only game I didn't dress. Um, I was in my stance, and I, you can see it on film, in Detroit, I just tried to, like, take a few steps forward, and then I felt like I got kicked in the back of the leg. And I turned around. On film, you can see me turn around and look, and then I was like, oh. Like, I knew it. Oh, this is what they say. And luckily, it wasn't, like, my Achilles, but it was my calf, and couldn't even walk you had to be so scared that was your achilles because the achilles you can't train for right you can't stretch your achilles you can't strengthen your achilles your achilles is going to go whether it wants to go or not there's nothing you do who, who uh, oj howard, howard. Yeah. oj howard told us he felt like somebody kicked him in the back or whatever and he wanted to fight somebody and he walked off and like no no dude nah. it, it happened dude it, it, it your achilles happened for I you get, you yeah. pop did you have black and blue was it all black was a lot of blood uh, it wasn't a crazy amount, but yeah, it was black. But when I tore my pec, that's when it bled down my arm, and my whole arm was black, like three quarters of the way down. Okay, so you popped calf, a groin, uh, pec, uh -huh. both knees, mm -hmm. no concussions. All though. ten fingers. All ten fingers are broken. And you missed one game? Yeah. No Toradol. Bullshit. Iron Man. No, I told you. they like I would love Bullshit, to say, like, AJ. I've never had a Toradol shot, man. What'd you do? You're just the toughest dude on earth? No. Yeah, you asked. Like, yeah, 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 you are. Yeah, we we get, it. get it. Yeah, it's that <laughs> Ohio. It's that Ohio it grit. It's that Ohio grit, dude. Pop a calf. That's. I mean, there's nothing you can no, do. No, that's what sucks. No, soft tissue things suck because those are things like hey, you can't really play through. Everything else, you can kind of gut it out and figure it out and play, no matter what you have. But when it's a like a calf, a really bad groin, you can't do it. All right, let's talk about something you could. Uh, a lot of guys couldn't battle through last season because oh. of mandate. Miles Garrett said conditioning-wise, he felt like he was at about 50% after COVID last year. So I think that is why, by the way, a lot of people, you get COVID, you're out two weeks, two yeah. games. Mm -hmm. AJ probably wouldn't have got COVID, by the way, because no way, of yeah. his uh, immune system just battling it off while he and was he in there. And also how much he buys into the protocols and everything like right. that. And also the amount of cigar smoke that fills his lungs every yeah. single oh, trip. Man. There's no way that COVID would have been able to get through that whole thing. Um, but he said he felt 50% after COVID. This could be the same thing for Cam Newton, by the way. Uh -huh. The long-term effects, he said he didn't feel like himself. This past offseason, I think we've all seen it. He is in... Great shape. I don't know if this is a revenge body on COVID that Miles Garrett has been going after. His basketball season is over. His career is over. Kevin Stefanski continues to be a hilarious human being. Says uh, he's retired. He had a hell of a run in basketball. Miles Garrett was at 50% last year. Now he's got Clowney alongside of him. That entire team gets, gets Odell back. The Browns might be a real problem. And Miles Garrett at 50%. Obviously, specimen. This year, he's going to be even better. This, hey, this bronze team, the dog pound. Hey, hey, you go from uh, outhouse to penthouse pretty quick, maybe. Uh, yeah. With Andrew Barry at the, at the helm, Cleveland's got to feel very good about the team they have. Hey, but don't you think it? It all like, it all hinges on on Baker. Now Baker has an unbelievable opportunity with all this talent. Great defense, it looks like his offense has tons of weapons. Now, if they don't win, the only person being blamed is Baker. I don't want to like 
I don't like doing this because I've had some bad body pictures that have been put out there. And uh, okay. I, f I felt like I've been in some really good shape, but maybe the pictures didn't make me look good. Yeah. Baker yeah. looks better this year than he's ever looked. Like conditioning wise, it feels like he's always been like a sturdy athletic guy, you know? This year it feels like, it, it, I just saw one video and I think it was supposed to make him look like he was in great shape, but he did, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like Baker has a hand handle of the offense I'm I'm real pumped for that Browns team. I mean, so it, it stinks that Dwayne Haskins and Ben Roethlisberger are still in the division, oh yeah. and Lamar Jackson and Sammy Watkins are in the division, and Joe Burrow is mm -hmm. in the division. He threw a ball uh, 70 yards the other day, just right out of the back of the end zone, by the way. Don't know what they were practicing. Loved it. Slow, maybe. Who's running the Ravens' social media account? Yeah, we said that earlier. Oh. There's a uh, potential, Me. hey, we want to fucking burn down a guy on the internet yeah. who's our guy. This It was windy, though. You heard about that Southwest Wings. Yeah, and I'm sure this isn't the only pass he threw all day, though. Yeah, exactly. I think this was actually the first play of the practice, and it was probably the only time they were allowed out there. Let's assume that ball got tighter. Sammy Watkins and Lamar are going to be on the same page. Sammy Watkins is a quarterback's best friend when he gets there. Mm -hmm. I do believe the odds for the Ravens to get Julio Jones have now jumped up to plus 25,000 after this video was released. Why is that? Because uh, big catch uh, radius? Julio saw and said, look, I mean, I can catch some balls, but if they're coming at me quacking like that, there's no chance I'm going to Baltimore. I want to let you know some Ravens fans have tweeted me. Uh, I believe blocked one particular person okay um they said your show is so lame or dead that you have to talk about a social media video of lamar jackson oh, yeah i actually do and uh yeah that is the biggest news and i felt like i went to bat for that guy a lot yeah hey there's gonna be some yeah. wobbles out there aj we are upset that the so maybe it was the social media person that tweeted we're not me. blaming him we're not oh, blaming him man. maybe that's the that only, i guess that may be the only throw and catch they have from Lamar to Sammy Watkins. So they're like, oh man, we're scrambling. We got to put something out. Here we go. And then they didn't show it to anybody else. I want to let people know that if they put up a video of a punter just hitting a clear shank <laughs> that rolls down inside the 10 or whatever, I would also say we could have probably put another ball out there. And I think this is, you know, all right, here we go. Let's do it. So like the Raven social media person, probably a great social media person. Okay, I'm sure they went to school. They got a degree in social media, whatever. That's and a I, thing. It is. It a is thing. now. And they, they're hustling. Is it social? What's it? What's it, the title? Uh, the title is: This is a fake bullshit degree. The only way you can actually get good at this is if you live inside of it. We can tell you what other yeah. people have done, but it's going to be very different for you. But you can go sell olds that you are younger and know what's going on and they don't. This is a new thing that is happening in a lot of businesses. Okay, yeah. it's, uh, I get a chance to see it. Mostly because I get a chance to have conversations with a lot of business people. We live in the social media world. I'm asked to have conversations with the social media people, the digital people, and I talk to them. I'm like, oh, you're a fucking idiot. This person has no idea what they're doing, but they probably got some degree. They told the old person, they say, hey, listen, this is, uh, this is what I do. You don't know this stuff. This is for younger people. I'll go ahead and do this for you. And they inevitably lie about the numbers, say they did this, they do that. Mm. And the people that are in charge have no fucking idea, so they don't know. Now, I'm not saying this is happening with the Ravens. This is an epidemic that is happening, though, across businesses that are trying to get younger. And the issue is, if somebody's good at social media, going to be hard to hire them because they're going to be very expensive. So it's like, it's one of those halfway things. I'm not saying the Ravens person did this, but if you're having somebody run your social, they got to be on the same page as you. Like they have to be, they have to be all in. You have to have a lot of trust in them too. I'm not saying just because of this video and this thing, but this is happening in a lot of businesses and we've all seen it. Somebody, some business will put out a tweet and you'd be like, oh, that's good. Hey, that's good. Hey, that's good. That's, good. that's good. And then people put out and you'd be like, well, how'd that get fucking hit sent? How, how did this hit send button get hit on that? It's This is kind of happening as the uh, social media age continues to take over these old businesses that maybe don't necessarily dive in so they don't really know. Not saying the Ravens person did this, but this Ravens person did not make Lamar look good. And I wonder if they even know what they did. I wonder if they even know that the conversation around Lamar is exactly what that video was kind of putting out there. So that's who we're upset with, AJ. That's And that's yeah. what you led off with this entire thing. Yeah, I, I wasn't saying it wasn't like a slight to Lamar at all. I'm just like, I know there's there's a lot better passes you could put out there. But to their credit, the social media people, like I would assume 90% of people that watch this video are like, oh, cool, Lamar and Sammy. Like they didn't think about I don't think so. No. I think you're not oh, giving really? credit to the internet enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're giving credit to the internet enough. The internet 
as soon as they see that video, the internet is what the internet is. It, it, quack, quack, quack. Immediately, quack. yeah, the amount of... There I mean, are a few of us, though, who watched that video and was like, clapped the social media team. was like, oh, they, they found the best pass of the day. And they put it out uh, see, this is media. exactly what that care. person did. All right, this is exactly what that person did. In the AFC North, by the way, it's hot in the kitchen with those fans. <laughs> very. It's hot in the kitchen with those fans, you know? And I've seen some terrible passes in practice out of very, 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 very good quarterbacks. That's going to happen. Yeah. And I'm just assuming he had no incompletions on the entire day. Uh, I assume that this was the first pass of the day. But, boy, they set him up for uh, this guy stinks. This guy's terrible. I, I, I might be misremembering, but did they do a schedule release, the Ravens uh, social media team, when everyone was doing all those? Hey, uh, they're all giving each other awards, too, I think. Oh, yeah. All these social media people, they start giving each other awards, and they start following along with other people really? who are doing like, all what, kind, what awards? Like the, is it the Razzies, or what are they? No, the Razzies, <laughs> I believe, are, that's uh, the worst movie. of all time. Yeah, right? yeah. worst yeah. movie of the year, uh -huh. yeah. See, I know my shit. What are the, no. Yeah, there are Twitter awards. What are they? Oh, they're, they're, their own, they're this. What are you talking about? Boom. Hashtag. Read it and weep. How about that? I can't exactly read that, but yeah. Maybe I don't think I've ever read it. 2019 hashtag sports award best sports podcast. Well, that's a lie, but we got the fucking trophy. <laughs> yeah. Nice. You know what I mean? Let's go. But there's all these awards and these social media people. And I understand. I appreciate the passion for social media because it is a beautiful place. It gets a bad rep because, you know, there is a wave of idiots that ha get an opportunity to speak their mind when we shouldn't ever hear from those people, but that's what social media is. There's a lot of good that happens in social media. And there's, you know, it, it can be used as quite a weapon for, you know, your business if you wanted to. And then you put it in the hands of some doofus. <laughs> it's like, okay, all right, so you have no idea what you're doing. They'll lie about numbers. Everything happens. You just they got to hire somebody, though. Like, think of these big corporations. They got to hire somebody can't, to get some kind of social media presence. You can't. Like, this is, this is like Darius Butler, right, when Darius was getting in the game. Darius was like, uh, he was, he asked me, he was like, you know, should I get a social media person? I was like, no, like you just need to go in. Like you just need to, it's one of those things where you have to, it, it, and if you're doing it, you have to know the, the mission of the business you're working for, the motto, the ideals, you, like it is not, a, you are the face of that organization to a lot of people. A lot of people. And I don't think the olds understand that either. It's like, hey, there's a lot of people that will only know your company via your company's Twitter, your company's Instagram, your company's Facebook. Like, so maybe who you put in charge there should probably be something that shares, you know, how you view. But it's, you see it time and time again. There's obviously a disconnect. Then it gets run up the chain. And it's like, I don't want that. That person's fired. Next person you bring in, oh, this person's a genius. They're going to save it. No. They're not. It's just, it's just a never-ending cycle, and that's the world we live in, AJ. Hey, and mm -hmm. that's why I'm very lucky that we got a bunch of doofuses in here. You know, Hell they, yeah. they run their social media. Yeah. Top of the line. Everybody in here is verified. Except oh, for no. this guy oh. isn't though. That's because two things: one, my Twitter stinks, and secondly, oh. I know what they're doing. Oh. Oh. Yeah, oh, yeah. Good line. you know, good line. I'm not gonna say that, but <laughs> Jelaine, by the way. Gizline. Gizline. What's, what's her name? Gizline. <laughs> it's Gizline. Her dad owns a newspaper in England. <laughs> her brother was an MI6. That documentary's coming out, I guess. Her name is Jillane. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. is not Gizline. <laughs> it, was it was a miss. <laughs> Who would have known? I, I, I First know. time he's been wrong. <laughs> yeah, but they might be saying her name wrong in that doc strictly because of Gizline. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, Whoa. Yeah, maybe. You don't know. Next level. Is she like going on trial soon? Like a British Gizline. accent. I don't know, dude. She was allegedly up for bail for like the fifth time yesterday yeah. or something Denied like that. Denied again. Denied again. I don't know how you get bail that quick. Isn't, isn't bail like something you got to like earn? I've seen all these movies and people just like wait forever. I mean, uh, old buddy in uh, Dufresne's guy. Uh, red? Not Red. Red was already dead. No, maybe Red. Yeah. You're talking bail or parole? parole, parole, parole. That's, over yeah, over that's again. parole. That's not. You're talking parole. Yeah, uh, yeah I thought bail. you get bail like almost. I bail is, bail is it, depending unless you're uh, like a flight risk. Like if you have a lot of money or you have like Which? availability to get away, then they don't uh, give you bail. They, keep, they hold so, you till the trial. See, I had it wrong. I, by the way. I didn't get offered a bail either for my public intoxication. You're kidding me? I didn't know you could get try and get bail five times. I, and I didn't know, by the way, that with the charges she had, that's even a conversation. Yeah. I didn't even know. That <laughs> yeah. was... Even murder trials, you can try to get bail, but they won't do it normally. Like, but how do you just keep going back to the drawing board? You know, Ted Bundy, he bailed in the middle of his uh, trial. Yeah, hey. he peaced out. Went Jum up into a room upstairs. Yeah. He had windows. Oh, jumped he out. Jumped out. Yeah, legs. it depends yeah. on how big of a flight risk you are, too. They call it like Ted Bundy. Jumping out windows. Yeah. And uh, Gizlane is a big time 
flight risk. I would assume, you yeah. You could say. Also, submarines, too. I think they were yeah. using the underwater missions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So flight mm-hmm. risk and water risk. I mean, <laughs> she's a Navy SEAL of escaping. It's safe yeah. to say people are looking for Knows her. about all non-extradition countries. Now, what are you guys betting on tonight? Are we got any good money makers, or are we just taking the night off and betting? Huh? No, are you guys betting. hot or are you guys cold? I stink. Oh, oh no! I did. Oh, I did no. sense. I did sense a little negativity out of you this morning. Hey, bet the Suns. But, you but think the Suns are gonna win. There is a. Don't I, say it, I yeah, do. I've been riding the Montreal Canadiens. Oh yeah, and they've been plus money every night. I mean, that is the one saving grace here. Hey, Islanders home dogs in the collie tonight. I was just gonna say, lock for the nice probably bees puck line. They'll probably win by eight if I had to guess. <laughs> what's your deal? What do you mean? What's my deal? Well, we're trying to have. Oh, actual conversation about making money off okay. the shit we don't care about. I'm being serious. No, it, no, you're hey, okay, not. Okay, fine. They're not going to win by eight, but they're going to win four nothing. <laughs> we got a, a guy joining us who's dropping an album, I think, tomorrow. Whoa. What? Whoa. Kanye? Yeah. It's the guy AJ, AJ booked. What's that? AJ? AJ, King. did you? No, it's not King Cots, dude. I, I don't know if he's dropping a full album yet. When he does, I will update. Everybody, hopefully, we'll find out about it. Sweet, if anybody finds out about King Cots having an album, we'll let you know. Please let me know. Sweet, Absolutely. I would like to know. Uh, hey, did you book somebody for tomorrow or not? Can we announce that or no? You're talking to me? Oh, Zito's pointing to me. I got I, I think he thinks I'm a guest. Uh, but uh, yeah, I got him. Nobody else school. can see that, AJ. We, uh, listen, AJ, be a professional. Okay. Come we, on. We, he's obviously handling Zito's things. Zito's trying to thumbs up me, and I don't know. He's acting like I'm not. I don't see him. You don't it's think the, the same, same camera, camera is going to the. Come on, AJ. I you've mean, been a hey, part of this. Settle down. Settle down. <laughs> it's okay. Did you book a guest for us tomorrow? Pretty big name guest, by the way. 205, we got a, a good guy coming on. Yeah. Who is Ooh. it? Are you telling people? I, want, I was waiting to see I mean, if you wanted to tell somebody. Of course, yeah. The, I, I hope he doesn't get pulled away with his job, but yeah. The strength and conditioning coach for the Jacksonville Jags. Oh. 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 Legs on, dude. This guy does deadlifts and squats in construction boots. Okay, oh. in Timbo's. He's the new director of sports performance, I believe, down for the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are investing in that city massively. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the spin zone is that they're building up the city. They are also building up a town in which they own everything and will collect all the money from, <laughs> especially if the team does well. It looks beautiful down there. Can't wait to talk to Schlegs about his first opportunity being an NFL strength and conditioning coach, and also what they're doing down there what's the workouts like are they on the edge are they elite are they beating up wrestlers i need to know what's going on with the jacksville jaguars can't wait for that 205 tomorrow uh the third member of the buckeye hero cereal box uh anthony schlegel will join us uh yes. joining us right now is a man who's dropping an album tomorrow I let's believe. go hey okay. you can hear him i think daily on hot 97 in new york he's okay. also on espn in new york he does some wwe commentary and tomorrow i believe he's dropping his first album i just learned of this we will talk to him about it ladies and gentlemen peter rosenberg yeah, peter! what up dude how are you, dude? Thank you for the kind intro. Hey, no problem at all. I know that you're always working. And whenever I had heard about this album, um, I immediately got excited. Are you are you rapping? Are you when does this album drop? What is this happening, Peter Rosenberg? Okay. Got a chance to have like my first real full conversation with you at WrestleMania Backlash. Enjoyed chatting with you. I've enjoyed your work from afar. You're gonna be an you're going to be a rapper? Is that what's happening? What are we doing okay, here? Okay, okay. All right, let me explain. I'm going to explain this to you like I explain it to my parents. Smart. So e- this album is the easiest way to put it would be to compare it to DJ Khaled. That would be the easiest thing to do. Rosenberg! <laughs> are you going We the Rosenberg! Minus the yelling. Uh, okay. It's just like a Khaled album. Okay. But, um... Yeah, I, I'd been wanting to do it for years, and uh, over COVID, I decided to buckle down and try to to get it done, and dude, it, I just, you ever done something, you know, actually, you've done this many times, because you're <laughs> someone who executes on ideas. I had an idea, and this was one that it actually turned out better than I ever would have imagined. I got like, I, I have Wu-Tang Clan all over my album, like it's, it's, a, it's in, for a, for a kid from Chevy Chase, Maryland, who grew up loving hip hop, it's a crazy dream come true. Well, there ain't nothing to fuck with, okay? And I, I, I don't. Did, did, so, how does like DJ Khaled? I think I've seen some videos on how he operates. Will we get a chance to see the behind the scenes of you in the studio dude, doing one of these, yeah. like DJ Khaled? I think he does a lot of this. I think there's a lot of this. A lot no, of he yelling. does. 
a lot of this, and then light on, and then there's a full on. Is there a lot of that coming, or we just got the music just to heat? Hey, let's just keep it to the music. Is that what this is going on? <laughs> yeah, I, you're not going to see a lot of that. And, and honestly, and musically, it's not. You know, it's not the same as Khaled either. It's a hardcore hip hop album, bro. This is like Stop, Stop, Styles P, Method Man, Raekwon, oh, Jim Jones. Um, Jim you know, I got Jones. Rock Jones. Hard Hey, Dipset. Hey, Dipset got back together at uh, the Knicks game last night. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah, I did see that. It's a good, this is a good moment. So, like, it's a it's a hardcore hip hop album, but I, I'm i setting the, you know, my goal is the moon, dude. I want to get nominated for the best rap album Grammy this year. That's what I'm going for. Okay. I wish you would have let me whistle in the background of a track. Uh, I've been trying to be a Grammy nominated shit. whistler for some time now. AJ, well, this is just album one, Pat. This is just album one. You're the vo you're the voice of SmackDown, baby. I'll have you on the next one. Hey, Michael Cole is the voice of SmackDown. I try to fuck it up every week. But I will say, if you want to Grammy on this first one, I don't know if you're going to go back to back, okay? So I think we might have missed. That's a great point. We might have missed the opportunity, but. <laughs> wait, wait. You know what? Let's just wait. I'll tell the Grammys, hold off on this one. I yeah. get McAfee on the Grammy one. Smart. Thank you right. so much. That'd be great. I would like it right here, by the way, next to uh, uh, Jared Lorenz. And go ahead, AJ. Hey, Peter, what's the plan now that you're, you're going to put this album out? Are you going to tour this thing around the country and go perform? Well, listen, nobody wants to see a 41-year-old Jewish man. Look what Pat's doing. Do you think anyone wants to see that? <laughs> no one wants. And Pat looks good in a tank top, so Thank it's you. even worse uh, for me. I've been fasting. Thank you. Um, so I, I'm going to do a couple of live shows. Um, I'm actually angling. You know, at Hot 97, we do the biggest hip-hop concert on planet Earth called Summer Jam. Um, oh. And it's actually this year, the day after SummerSlam. It's on August 22nd. Oh. MetLife Stadium. Here we go. SummerSlam, Summer Jam. Actually, you know what, Pat? Dude, yeah, let's bro. take your jet yeah. from SummerSlam huh? to Summer Jam. Wow. Ooh. Where's SummerSlam? Do you know? Summers, well, I, I, I only know what I read on the internet, but it sounds like it's going to be out west, Las Vegas. That's what the internet oh. says. Oh, Ooh. see, I don't know that, Peter. This is something that you know that I do not know. The internet, that's what the, now listen, it could be somewhere oh. else, but here's the deal. Okay. If we, if you just let me hop a ride on your, on your PJ, oh my, yeah. I'll get you the full all access mingling with every rapper situation of all time. Oh. So okay. Oh my God. Hey, if I get out on a stage and I get, whoa, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> whoa, where's that? It's at MetLife you said? Summer yeah, it's, oh, it's at MetLife 50,000 strong, baby. Really? Live performances? I should have known about this. I know about, um. Uh, what's that big uh, country one out in the middle of the woods? Uh, you don't mean um, uh, you don't mean Bonnaroo, do you? Bonnaroo. Okay, mm -hmm. I know Bonnaroo. There's a there's another country concert in uh, AJ's town, Ohio, over there. They got something deep in the woods. I did not know Summer Jam, fifty thousand people in a stadium. Is it one day a weekend? Do people live it's, there? It's not. It's not like Bonnaroo. There's not like people like stoners living in vans. <laughs> it's it's just it's one day. But it's, I mean, it's everybody. Dude, come on. You don't know the famous Hot 97 story? You don't know about the time Jay-Z brought out Michael Jackson on stage at Summer Jam? Oh, oh. I do not, by the way. This, this sounds unbelievable. Did he hit so a hold on. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you this. Hold on. So in 2001. Were Ray you Jay there? Were you there as a fan? Or no, 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 no. No, this is, this is what I was dreaming of working there. Okay. I, I was far away. Okay. All right. So Watch. in 2001, when Jay-Z was in the middle of beefing with, with Mob Deep, right? Okay goes to Summer Jam and has the most legendary performance of all time where he disses Nas, he disses Mob Deep, he finds a picture of Prodigy, God rest his soul, of Mob Deep, finds a picture of him wearing a ballet outfit as a child, puts it on the big screen. Wow! And then after that, after he suns everybody with pictures and shit talk, yeah. he then is like, hold on one second, ladies and gentlemen, and the crowd behind him, Memphis Bleak, Dame Dash, Beanie Siegel, they all part, and effing Michael Jackson walks out on the stage. Oh my God. Let's go. And he's now he in the do beef. Anything. I'll he tell just you what, stood there. Hey, you get into a beef with somebody, you know who you call? Fucking Michael Jackson. Yeah. yeah. This guy, <laughs> this guy's gonna handle it. Uh, congrats to. Uh, you and hopefully we will get a chance to go to Summer Jam. That sounds absolutely awesome. I feel like I should know more about that. I do not. We're talking to Peter Rosenberg. Um, dropping an album tomorrow. Let's hey, go. what time is it? Are you, did you think about maybe doing like the uh, Lemonade 
out of nowhere drop and just Ooh. being like, look at me now. Peter Rosenberg's a fucking musician, dude. Did See, you? by the way, you you could pull that off, Pat, because you have you have a rabid fan base. If you dropped at midnight, your people the next day, Don't they'd know. all be out there. If I dropped out of the blue, yeah. it would live in the blue. I had to do work. I had to hire a nerdy Jewish man in Los Angeles to do my publicity. No. I, I had to put together a team no. to build this thing. What? Yeah. You hired a publicist? What did they say? So how does this work? Did you just, you're on Hot 97. You're friends with, you know, a lot of uh, incredible musicians and talented people. What the publicist tell you? To tweet about it? What, what, how did, <laughs> what happened here? How'd this whole thing go? The, the, you know what? I'm glad you asked. It's been an interesting experience. And being I can imagine. cheap, it's hard. It's hard forking over money for something okay. of which you don't know how it's going to go. Yep. Like, it's cool, but like I'm not doing the Tonight Show tonight. My album's out at midnight. I'm not on Fallon. I'm not on Kimmel. I'm on McAfee. Yeah, you and me booked this, by the way. And I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. I don't know. I don't know what you're spending your money for. Hopefully, this thing goes platinum, though, and then maybe you'll get the money back from the nerdy Jewish man. Your words, not mine. That did the thing. No. Connor, what do you have? Yeah, Peter, you're in the concrete jungle. Is there any thought from Knicks fans to go and pack out? the Barclays Center and root oh. against the Nets? Or are they going to uh, be Team New York and root for them? Okay, well, hold on. That's a brilliant idea. Well, you just That was a brilliant suggestion I hadn't even thought of. He's not verified, but he is no. uh, He is a guy that exists on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. let me tell you what's not going to happen. <laughs> There's gonna be no, there's going to be no rooting for the Nets by Knicks fans at all. Really? Like, no, you catch some of that. In New York, there's a little Giants-Jets. Like, oh, I like the Jets. I like the Giants. Oh, I like the Yankees. But I pull for the Mets. With the Knicks, they hate everyone else. Mm. Like they Don't let anyone tell you different. The Knicks have the number one most loyal fan base in this city, and they are disgusted by the Nets. They're, I like the idea of them packing out the building and, and booing. But by the way, have you guys taken time to appreciate – the heel work. Sorry to keep bringing up wrestling, but Chat. Pat, the heel work by Kyrie Irving right now. Oh, yeah. He reminds me of CM Punk when he had Straight Edge Society. Like he's saying the right things, but he's so holier than thou all the time. It's brilliant stuff. Yeah, we actually talked earlier about whenever LeBron's out, if he's out, which we assume he's going to be out. Not tonight. Next game probably going to be out. The Clippers are going to be out. You know, the NBA is going to have to build something up. You know, I thought they should just. Just build the Nets as heels. Just have them be the heels. You know what I mean? They don't like the media. They're not going to talk. But the internet loves them, though. So I don't know how that'll go. But I think that it, is... It's like, it's like Bret Hart in Canada and the U.S. Like, <laughs> the media hates the, the Nets. But you're right. Twitter loves uh, the freaking Nets. Because you can't deny their basketball. They're just so annoying. It's just kind of... Not Harden so much, but Katie and Kyrie, who are both great guys in real life, but when it comes to their basketball persona, they're just heels. It's just who they are. Yeah. I mean, basketball without LeBron, I don't know what we're going to do. Oh, uh, it's going to be tough without old Bron Bron, Peter. I just want you know, to I, I, gathered, I gathered from your celebration of the Jaguars' strength coach that this is a football head and <laughs> No, Rosenberg, you don't know us, dude. No. All right, don't you put us in that box, dude. Don't you put us in that box. What do you have, Ty? Peter, what's the temperature like with uh, Yankees fans in New York right now? Does anyone give a shit, um, or is, are they just kind of being forgotten? I mean, I feel like they're starting to kind of come on here a little bit, but I don't know if anyone cares anymore. Yeah, listen, the Yankee fan they never they never are apathetic. Th that that's not something they are. What they are is Great the most complaining, bitchy, whining, oh. Uh, unappreciative oh, yeah. fan base of all time. They think they have no one. They think Aaron Judge is a bum. They, they're just, Not true. They, they complain. I do I, my, my afternoon show is yeah. with the voice of the Yankees. Right. Yeah. Like, okay. I'm on with them every day. Yes. Uh, I, like, all we get is calls from Yankee fans who just complain. I mean, the fact is, you guys... The Yankees are not that talented. They're you guys stink, dude. Yes. No, no, no. You guys stink, yes. dude. They're getting hot. Oh, no, no, they stink. Show hey Otani. If he was on that team, you guys would be good. They stink. Well, man. maybe Cashman does something and fucking goes and gets Otani. Oh, See, right? there you go. 
Now it's coming out. That's all they ever say. The cash the fucking went and did something. <laughs> Here's, you said you're from Chevy Chase, Maryland or whatever. And, Chevy uh, Chase. How long have you lived in, and I know he's got a bank there. He's got a town there. I mean, it, it's a big deal, obviously. Very funny guy. How long have you lived in New York? And do you consider yourself a New Yorker now? I'd assume. Uh, I've been here now for f 13, 14 years. Um Long time. Listen, I, I don't think you can legitimately consider yourself like a lifetime New Yorker if you weren't raised here. But like, this is home now. I mean, it, it's definitely it's definitely home. I'm more comfortable here than anywhere else. But, you know, it's different. Let me put it this way. My girlfriend was raised in Queens. Like when you're raised in New York, you are a different animal mm -hmm. than to not be raised in New York. Makes sense. So I, I consider it home. But no, I'm not I'm not a true, true New Yorker. So you're a you're a Maryland rapper. You're not a New York rapper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like Wale. Yeah, what's that? I'm like Wale. Yeah, okay. Hey, by the way, Wale needs a new... You know what he needs to do, by the way? And you probably know him better than I do. I got a chance to chat with him a couple of times. Uh, he needs to make a remix to... Uh, and she throws up whatever she eats. Leave the bathroom with a nosebleed. Mm -hmm. A regular girl. Mm -hmm. Celebrity mm -hmm. dreams. She mm -hmm. is 90210. Mm -hmm. I think that song would go very, 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 very hard if he was to do that right now. I don't know why he doesn't. He needs to take his old bangers before, because he was ahead of everybody else, basically, and just, re you need to do this. You need to run yeah, through Berg, these old things, yes. and bring them back to life. That's That should be a move here. Let's go, Rosenberg. I mean, listen, now that I'm a Maryland rapper, these are the things <laughs> I'm going to think about. This is the work I'm going to do. I'm going to call you, and we're going to make these things happen. Hey, I appreciate you for joining us, man. Good luck tomorrow. You know what I mean? Hey, dude, I appreciate you uh, having me on, and for real, I don't know what your boys tell you. AJ probably busts your balls. You're crushing it on SmackDown, buddy. It's not an easy job. You're doing great. Miles Teller hates me on there. <laughs> Miles Teller hates me on SmackDown. I mean, everybody else seems to think I'm doing okay. You know a lot more about the business than a lot of people, so I appreciate you saying that. You also probably see the mistakes I'm making on a regular basis. I have a lot of room for growth, but I'm enjoying the hell out of it, Peter. I appreciate you. Where, where can we get the album tomorrow? Everywhere? Yo, tonight at midnight, the album, Real Late, it's streaming absolutely everywhere. You can pre-add it on Apple Music, but you can stream everywhere. Everywhere on earth, I'm putting out vinyl in a few days and all that stuff. But Ooh. for right now, just stream it wherever you get music. I hope your people dig it, man. Are you signing it? We send a vinyl. Are you signing? Oh yeah, it? I'm signing vinyl. Sure, sure, sure. Can we use some for like intros and bumpers? No, we can't. We'll get shut down on YouTube. No, I'll, can I? Can I? I'll send you the full thing. I would love. I would love to send you some music to play. I'll send you. Do you need cleans? You don't care. No, we don't care. But we will get a strike from your LA publicist person if we play yeah. it. If we could get that business signed on yeah. the back end, so we don't lose our business, we'd love you to. Know, that. <laughs> The way you described that, you left out one word in the middle that would have made that whole thing seem crazy between L.A. and publicist. If you said, if, listen, I am not going to send the Rosenberg Jewish team of lawyers to shut down. <laughs> okay? I appreciate not that. Doing I appreciate that, man. I understand why they, uh, why it has to happen, everything like that. But uh, good luck, brother. No, thank you, you for having me on, guys. I appreciate you. Peter Rosenberg. Yeah. Yeah. AJ, that was Peter Rosenberg. I know. I, I don't. You think we could use some of his music? Like I haven't heard it yet, but I assume it's good. He was. He seemed pretty excited. You know, I'm. I'm hey, he spent a lot of time put this together. Dream come true. I'm excited for him. I seen that he was doing it. I was like, hey, let's talk about it. I don't know what it's going to be though. I'm not 100 no, sure. I don't know. Wu Tang was all over this thing. Yeah. Yeah, so you got meth, right? Meth and man, big part of Wu Tang, yep. obviously. Mm -hmm. He's in there. I wonder if he's got some red man. If he's got red and meth Skrillex. in there, Martin, or no? Martin Skrilly, right? The guy who had the Wu Tang album. All right. Let's get, Jones. Break, dude. Let's get to a break. All right. You know, former former bro, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. He sold it. He sold it, I think. That People album. seem to really like it. Well, he went to jail, that guy. Yeah, yeah he did. I think. Yeah. This is DJ Griff, by the way. Hell yeah. So back. I wonder if Rosenberg wants to use any of DJ Griff's beats. Should. On his next album. <laughs> is it a playlist? I don't think no. so, because it sounds like it's original yeah. songs for this thing, right? Signing vinyls, dude. Yeah. Let's go, dude. Come on, Pete. Imagine if Rosenberg is in like an arena. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a week from now, you know what I mean? I mean, he knows all these rappers. Couldn't he maybe open up for somebody in a so big arena tour? DJ Khaled opened for Beyonce in her, and it was in stadiums and arenas. And DJ Khaled had his, his booth there. He looked like he was this big <laughs> in some of the pictures I saw, and he was giving it his all yeah. every fucking night. If Rosenberg's bouncing around, oh, 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 oh. make it happen. <laughs> <laughs>
Let's get to a break. We're back on the other side with a uh, rowback read uh, that is going to be. People are going to talk about this read for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know why? Why's that? Because AJ Hawk is reading. Yeah! yeah! It's the Pat McAfee Show Thursday. Better send June. it over. I'll take a picture. Right now. I'll take a picture. Yeah, we'll send it over right now. Uh, we'll see you in four minutes. Some phone calls and some more sports talk after, you know, a big Grammy rap album conversation. Yeah. This show's got range. Fuck off. We'll see you in four. <laughs> Why is football the greatest sport on earth? And do you think football is the greatest sport on earth? And why do you like football? That's a really deep question there, Pat. I know. I think I'd get a good answer out of you, though. Like, I, I think you'd be able to talk about it in a way that I think a lot of people haven't because you've been at the pinnacle of it for so damn long and inside of it. And your brain is a pretty fantastic one. We've learned here over the last few weeks, mm -hmm. obviously. Last few weeks, that's it. That's all the time we've learned that. I think it's the greatest sport in the world for one main reason it is a true team sport where it is damn near impossible for one person to dominate an entire oh, game God, right. and if you look at other team sports uh, uh basketball with five guys on the court i think you've seen multiple players over the years uh, maybe one player or maybe one or two players on a squad be able to dominate and win championships baseball you can have a dominant pitcher uh, and win championships soccer you can have a dominant forward and or goalie that seems to be a little more of a team sport, but you don't have 11 players engaged at the same time on every play. It is truly uh, a sport reliant on every player on the field to do their job in order to be successful. And I think that's why at times, you know, certain star players can get uh, maybe too much credit and, and maybe too much blame on the flip side because it does take so many players at the same time in three phases to win football games uh, and I think that's the beauty and the draw of our sport is that something new happens all the time because you are literally dealing with 11 humans on the field at, at one time who all have lives outside of football and there's distractions there's uh, a reliance on, on coaching there's a reliance on preparation there's a reliance on diet and performance um, I just think there's so many facets to it that you see something new every single week and I think that's the beauty in our game uh, when it comes to the love that I have for it, it's rooted, and I think like any uh, any player who's played for a long time, the, the love is not just about our sport, it's about competition. And I think there's nothing in the world, for me, that fills that need and that hole I have like competition. I think we, you know, if players who play for a long time at a high level, you have that uh, need to be satiated uh, competitively and, and it's a love of going out there and going against guys and being in an environment where you know that uh, nothing is guaranteed and that's why I, at times I've taken uh, umbrage to people saying that it's easy because it's not easy it's never easy and I think that's the beauty in our game is that you see things new every single week it's never easy and your only thing you're guaranteed is, is the ability to compete. Uh, I love that aspect of it. I love competing. I love going out there and harnessing the fear of failure, where I think so many people who maybe don't love football as much, the root of that is, is a deep uh, fear of failure, uh, that you might go out there and your best might not be good enough, and that's not okay with you. McAfee at the top of the key. Five seconds, four seconds. Step back three for the win. It's good! Splash! It's not Sunday because the bank is open! This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. 
Oh, hey guys, guess what? The guys at Roback have been sending us the performance polos, Q-zip pullovers, and hoodies. And I'll be honest, we're in love with their stuff. Hell yeah! Yeah, quarter zip. It's soft, it's comfortable, and it's very, very fresh, as Pat likes to say. Yeah. And guess what? Roback is allowing us to be active while looking good. And then guess what, guys? It's an absolute game changer. What? We know that. And when you see someone rocking a rollback with their dog logo, you just kind of give them the old subtle nod because you know they get it. Just like Pat in his Jeep waves that he has in his $100,000 Jeep Wrangler that he recently purchased, a 2012 with over 100,000 miles on it, rollback. by the way. Rollback. But Roback's <laughs> performance polos, guess what? Back to they you. are next level. It took them over 20 iterations to get the perfect collar structure that lasts after many washes, unlike any other polo out there. Guess what, Pat? You know something? I know you're talking a lot of shit on the greatest Jeep of all time in the middle of this thing, but what's that, pal? I've said guess what six times. Yeah, yeah. 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 But great. their print designs are starting to take over and gain the attention of several NFL stars. Really? Look at Pat McAfee. Ooh. And I'm not even a big polo guy. I don't know if Pat's a big polo guy either. They, they when he goes to those nice. Uh, country clubs that he belongs to and he forgets that he belongs to about seven or eight of them no, uh, he has to put a polo on but Roback's polos are so good that whenever I put on a collared shirt it has to be a Roback and I think Pat feels the same way as I do you're damn right mm -hmm. AJ. and they just dropped performance hoodies and I kid you not they're the softest most comfortable performance hoodies in the game if you use code Pat P-A-T at Roback.com for a generous 20% off all new customers through the end of this week. Wow. That doesn't make any sense in this read, but that's spelled R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com for 20% off all polos, Q-zips, hoodies, and performance tees with the code PAT. Don't say anything. I'm almost done, Pat. They just dropped gear for Memorial Day weekend. And they have more <laughs> summer polos coming out soon, so go check them out at Roback.com. R-H-O-B-A-C-K. Hell Thank yeah, AJ. AJ. Let's go, AJ. Hey, baby, AJ. Hey, baby. Good work, Z. Yeah, baby, baby Z. Z. What's going on? Well, I was obviously looking for the Roback hat that I wore into the office today <laughs> earlier, and I couldn't find it. Uh, Z saw me searching for something, and he went and grabbed me a wedge. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. I just want to get in the golf, because Roback is amazing on the course. It's amazing in life. Caddy. Can't thank him enough. You were a caddy, though, at Augusta, so True. people need to remember was, that. Yeah. Uh, Dan Marino, Pittsburgh legend. Uh, graduated high school with my dad. All right, at Central Catholic in Pittsburgh. Uh, we're not friends, but did graduate same class, same level of grit. Uh, he grew up in Oakland, uh, part of Pittsburgh, where the University of Pittsburgh is. Him and his dad, every single day in the park as a kid, were working on a quick release. Oh, yeah. Dan Marino might have liked to party. Okay, maybe he had a good time. Perhaps. Maybe it was said that he had a blast and was up all hours of the night whenever he was able to perform at his highest mm -hmm. level. Uh, he obviously goes down to the Dolphins, has a tremendous career. Tremendous career. Had a great throw at one point. Never won a Super Bowl, but the Dolphins have never been the same since he left. He came out and said, Listen, I don't want Bill Belichick. All right, fucking take it over Shores' nope. record. No, no way. Dan Marino is rooting against Bill Belichick. I hope he don't get it. I'm a Dolphin for life, Coach Shula for life. I don't want him to get it, says Dan Marino. Uh, how do you feel about this Shula-Belichick battle? I believe Belichick, greatest coach of all time, will definitely get his NFL wins record if he wants them from Shula. But I like the fact that Dan Marino said, I ain't fucking around with no Patriot right here. Mm -mm. Nope. I, like that, I like that Dan is up front and honest. I'm sure there's a lot of players that would feel this way that what wouldn't feel comfortable coming out and saying it but dan's uh dan's standing up for his coach man good, good I, for him. Saw, I saw dan giving away a house last year on the internet oh yeah, yeah. hey really? look, there ain't nothing better than a good ball game uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> especially when you're looking at a house like this yeah. he's ins are he's ins are through and through especially as he gets older you, you start to hear him start to stop caring about exactly how he's speaking he starts dropping in there what a legend uh Connor was not happy about this. No, no, no. way. And I, I understand what he's saying. You know, it's his coach. I, you know, when someone's probably getting near to Belichick because Belichick will break the record, I'll probably t say the same thing. I don't want them to get it, but because it's Dan Marino right now, he can go to hell. Let's go Easy. to let's go to Russ in Michigan. Russ, what's going on, pal? Hey, P Mac, how you doing? Hey, not too shabby. How are you, Russ, up there in uh, Michigan? Mercy, not Dan Campbell. Hey, shout out, boy. Shout out, AJ. Shout out. Shout, out, shout, out. shout out. AJ, that was one hell of a read. Holy crap. Dude, Appreciate you, buddy. Shocked me back to life. Uh, what do you want to talk about, Russ? You're right. That Connor, was, that was font, a... font negative four. Uh, what are you talking Welcome about? Welcome to my world, pal. Uh, that was an Emmy award winning read, though. You're right, Russ. What do you want to talk about, brother? Ready what? for daytime. 
Hey, MCDC, you going to put the hammer down in Detroit, huh? I'm just worried that this seems like the same recipe I've been seeing every four or five years. No big hires ever want to come there. No, Motor City no, no, Dan, no. it's a different story. That guy had a helmet on during the press conference today. <laughs> Patricia's a big hire. Oh, Hell yeah. Well, Greatest fourth quarter coach right, of all time. Dan Campbell's huge, dude. That's like one of one right guys. there. Did you see this, AJ? This is right, an oh, anomaly. Yeah. This is a brand new Lions. This is Motor City Dan Campbell. The same picture that we're... You know, applauding right now, Evan Foxy said, "Did we hire a big doofus?" Whoa. Yeah, I love. All right, I love MCDC. The answer's wrong. He's not a doofus. No. He's hey, nobody ever said you can't uh, work hard and have fun at the same time. Bingo. That's right. That's right. He's just being himself. He's Ted Lasso times ten. Real life. I'm a big MCDC fan. Think that Lions team's going to win at least five, six games. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're on their way. Who knows what's going to happen in the NFC North, too, with what's going yeah. on over there in Curly Lambo's old stomping grounds. <laughs> Hour three is on the other side of this six-minute break. We'll take some phone calls and more conversation. This is Pat McAfee Show, June 3rd. They want to play for the Yankees one day, the people I'm playing against. They want to play for the fucking Yankees. Check out, like, in there, we, we put a little surprise in there for you. Let's get iced, it feels like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's start the day, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck you get it? <laughs> <laughs> it's great to be a member of the Washington Wild Things baseball team. We're number one in the league, right? Yeah, yeah let's fuck, yeah. fuck everybody. Yeah. Fuck everybody else. When I take BP, will there be anybody telling me how to fuck the hit? No. It feels like the wind's blowing this way. Yeah. Might have to attack that fence tonight, huh? Hey, you got it! Does the DJ play heaters like this all night? I started hitting two days tonight. Oh, you'll be fine. I think that's will probably only face 90 miles an hour. Is that me in the game, then? Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. This is a good at bat. This is a good at bat. Oh, 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 shit. Oh, shit. Give me it. <laughs> one, one, pitch. Let's go. Line drive. Oh, right Son of a bitch. The... That came down a lot faster than I thought, though. Let's be honest. Send Send it's deep, so and it is off the wall. So I it up. Excuse me. You could all get off of my dick. We would be better off. Tell you what, would have been nice to take a nap earlier. Another throw get back. first. <laughs> you have to tell me when that's happening. You're making me look bad. Hey, Steven, fuck you. Hey, fuck you, Steven. Hey, nice pitch. One, four, nine. Does that feel good, Steven? Four. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. wow. He tosses up the ball. Wow. Just... Back to being a player now. Making plays. Touchdown. What inning is it? Second. Down to the second. Jesus. But it was finally my time to get in that box. Number one, the right fielder, the former punter from West Virginia, a former Indianapolis yeah. Colt, and a current Barstool Sports personality, Pat McAfee. The anticipation is real. Oh, oh fuck. Oh, right that Pat. Hit out to me. I'm in the hole? Son of a bitch. This is about to happen. And that will bring up Pat McAfee once again. First pitch from Reynaldo Lopez, swing and a miss by McAfee. Hey, 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 who was that? And the catcher goes, I had to give you one. Looked off speed. What was that? Then I look at the pitcher, and he's smiling. He's like laughing, like he's toying with me like I'm a child. It all comes down to this. My last at bat. Hey, I'm going to get on. You bring me home. This is your life on the line, fucker. Let me tell you something. If we, you're going to take an L, okay? You're going to take one. Well, I think that the close your eyes and swing method is perfect. <laughs> oh, this is hardball. Oh, Hell yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Jesus. Uh, you have no prayer. All right. Number one. Oh, boy. Oh, this is the duck and duck thing. Let's go! Welcome to the play! Oh, his spinal cord <laughs> is severed. Look to your right. Look to your right. Look to your right a little bit. 
<laughs> sick of you Pokemon nerds hustling my fucking dog. I'm getting pretty sick of them too. Yeah. I only learned American history. I don't know shit about anywhere else. You had wow. to. I mean, you don't even know American history. Yeah, I do. I know almost everything about America. Who's your second president? Uh, Sam Adams. Wrong. <laughs> 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 to fear. Close. John Adams. Oh, so you got half loaves? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it turns out when you don't do all your shopping at a gas station, there are other Huh. That's, that's kind of Wait, they have more than hot dog bugs? <laughs> One dollar bill in the America is... Undefeated. I mean, tried and true. As far as strip. You guys don't have a one dollar bill? No, we got to lose some time. <laughs> Fucking uh, undercover cop. <laughs> what? <laughs> you will volunteer firefighter today. Yeah. What is this? I don't know. I saw these boxes. I was like, I need to do <laughs> Just the. I mean, it does look like. Imagine hey, you guys want some weed? <laughs> <laughs> There's nowhere to go. Right, right there. there. Yeah. 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 No, look is. left. Look left. There it is. Right here. Oh, oh, That's nice. That's that's look good. good. Oh, I Bill is bald. Bill, that is not coming back. We're sailing, but I hit the buffet before I left, and I ate so much food, dude. So much food. And I, I was used to being on boats, but I went on the smaller boat, like with the parasailing shit. And yeah, dude. I remember I took down like two pizzas, three burgers. And I got food. I got food. I got food. I got food. Did you parasail or provide? No. Look away! Look away! I, I parasail puked all over the place, oh, dude. Dumb? <laughs> like, what is no. that? No. So what they did after all the stuff that happened with him, they actually cut <laughs> Ron Jeremy's on penis <laughs> off and planted it in this, uh, this pad. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to that show, Thursday, June 3rd, 2021. Greatest hour in the history of radio and YouTube, potentially on its way. Also, could be the worst. Don't know. Let's get to it, shall we? Shots one for that beat drop. Joining me, the Hammer Down Boys, the Bugle Boys, Talk to the Table, everybody in the back. He's Mr. AJ Hawk. AJ, last night, Trey Young. Scored 36 points in Madison Square Garden. Took a bow. The Atlanta Hawks blow by the New York Knicks. who are only expected to win 20 games this season. But brought back a fan environment that I think we all missed massively. Including somebody spitting over 50 Cent and his lady on Trey Young. Trey Young talking shit back to the crowd and then inevitably the Atlanta Hawks getting a win is everything all right back there? are we okay uh actually update almost took AJ out there oh, okay happy, to get AJ off the screen all right happy it, it didn't happen oh, great to still have you here <laughs> have you watched any of the NBA Trey Young I think is the big star so far of this NBA playoffs but it's all about to end I think as soon as Bron Bron loses out here AJ well he's the new uh Reggie Miller right and Reggie have a thing with Spike and he'd yeah. go back and forth every time he's playing an MSG yeah Reggie Miller uh has taken the happiness out of Knicks fans uh, still to this day, I believe. And what did he score? He scored 13 points or something like that. Yeah, he also, he he also Spike buried last Spike last night because Spike left the game early. Reggie was announcing it, said, Fairweather fan, you should stay till the end of the game. Well, maybe Spike had to poop. Yeah, True. Yeah, that is, happens a lot that later, doesn't though. get talked about enough. You know what I mean? LeBron had to go poop and the whole world. Hey, have they asked him, though? Has there been anything on that? Like, did they? I would assume they asked him LeBron about leaving. I saw Windhorse was on TV yesterday. Was, I'm not, did yeah. he Did he confirm or deny that he uh, took a massive shit at the end of that game and that's why he had to get out of there? I thought he clarified, like, him and LeBron before the game had some White Castle together and then, you know, it led to that situation. Wendy did confirm that he took multiple shits. He could not confirm when LeBron did. If he did, Wendy probably had a bucket full of LeBron shit. He was carrying it around for him. 
See, Keep going, please. <laughs> see, that's, that's why. That's why we can't talk about stuff around here. Um, Each one got better and better. Yeah, I mean, they were just sitting there waiting. Tua, uh, Tua's trainer has come out and said that he was at about sixty percent last year. Good segue. Uh, he said that. Well, yeah, everybody thinks this is fucking some slapdick show, and we could just bury the greatest basketball Grow player up, of all time. Bury them, and you want it to happen. I mean, boys, let's have a little bit of professionalism, okay? There are people listening and watching. Windhorse has won awards, Many more awards than all of us can. All of us combined in here in yeah. the media world, okay? All we said was that he, we didn't talk anything bad about LeBron. We said that oh. Wendy, however, can be a mouthpiece. Yeah, yeah, he is, and you. I think he was alluding to him carrying his water back air sure. and oh. his shit is what he was talking about. What you were talking about is Windor's diet, okay? Nah, yeah, anyway, no. yeah, you no. as well. Yeah, no. yeah you also no, did. No. As well. I was actually shitting on White Castle because that shit stinks. Yeah, well, actually, I think he actually he did. did the White Castle. You piled on top. Oh, that place were, is the worst. Uh, I mean, Harold and Kumar were looking for it. I don't know why. <laughs> no Neither. clue. I have no idea why they're looking for it. Go to place. McDonald's. But nonetheless, well, I, guess so good. I appreciate Windhorse. Okay? Yeah, me too. I took out a Crave case one time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Four so days. Good. No. Oh, four days. Oh, yeah. You got to coat your belly with a milkshake. That's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to eat 30 burgers? <laughs> Okay, yeah. or 24, whatever the Crave case is, if you also have a milkshake. And that is why we think we're missing out on your true talent. Joey Chestnut should have nightmares of Zito on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Since he doesn't, I think we're missing the mark. You're great at what you do. I just want to let you know that. Thank you. Can't do a milkshake into a Crave case. It'll be a problem. But what? Windhorse will let us know what happened. There's no way LeBron loses tonight. I mean, that's no. just the NBA is not going to let it happen. Joining us now, AJ, first time on this show. I had learned of this human because he was on Hammer Down with these guys. Hammer Down airs in the office while it's live, and I normally have very stupid calls that I'm on. That is a very normal thing I have to deal with. It's just a part of the whole thing, you know, who knows, moving, shaking, what's going to happen. And I look over on TV and I see this electric factory talking about hockey, talking about NBA, talking about gambling. Had no idea it existed. Actually said, need to know who this guy is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, a radio horse, uh, host for Sports Grid on Sirius XM. His Twitter is at Sports Rage. The guy is a gambling phenomenon. Canadian. Can't wait to talk to him about the NHL and what happened last night that ended with seven people wearing tennis shoes on the ice in the end of a game last night, which is never good. Ladies and gentlemen, Gabe Morenz. Hey! Hey! What's going on, dude? Hey, fired up. Let's do this, Pat. Let's do this, AJ. Hey. I am really excited to be here. First things first. Big fan of both of you guys, and you're both badasses. You're both obviously great athletes. But I'm going to put a challenge out to you. I heard you guys talking about fast food. I don't think you could live a week on my diet. I don't think you could live a week on my diet. Like, AJ would die. Like, I'm having Dairy Queen milkshakes for breakfast, guys. I had a bacon and egg sandwich last night at like 4 in the morning before I went to sleep. Let the bacon, you know, just sort of sit there overnight. I'm ready to rock. I'm not healthy as fuck. But I'm ready to rock, guys. Let's do it. Okay, Gabe. Okay. I was about to say, you look very, very good for a guy that's just housing what seems to be six, 7,000 calories of shit every single day. You're unbelievable. How how did you get into this game? Were you a, a radio guy, a host? Were you? How did you get into this game? Because you're on Sports Grid, obviously. Your Twitter is electrifying. I did not know you exist. As soon as I saw you, I like fell in love. How did we get here? And now, milkshakes it in the morning and 4 a.m. bacon, egg, and cheese. Obviously, that helps. But how did we get here, Gabe? You know what? Um, I've been doing this now. We're moving in on our 20th anniversary of our radio show, Sports Rage. But like you yeah. guys. I was an athlete, but I wasn't as good. So I played hockey. My grandfather played uh, for the Montreal Canadiens, and he played for Team Canada in the 1936 Olympics, actually, Special Olympic Games uh, in Berlin. So I grew up playing hockey. So sort of the classic, you know, part of my family were athletes. He was a linesman in the NHL after, and my father was a slacker, like, rocker type dude who was getting busted all the time. So I had, like, the rock guy in me and the hustler street guy in me, and I had the athlete in me. So I was playing sports and I got into a metal band called Homicide and Corrupted Youth. Oh, I moved to Hollywood, California, lived like a wannabe rock star for a while, was always betting on sports, going to Dodger games and, you know, big, big sports fan, massive sports fan. 
And then I realized, you know what? I know more than all these idiots that are on the air. I'm listening to talk shows. I'm like, God, this is fucking boring. I'm like, this guy's giving pits. He couldn't pick his fucking nose. And finally, uh, my buddy started telling me, you know what? You're better than all these guys on the air. Yeah. To do this. One day I'm on the road with my band Homicide. We come this close from hitting a fucking moose. Real story, all right? <laughs> I'm out. After that, I'm like, I'm out, man. I'm not dying to make like 200 bucks a night in some dumbass bar in the middle of nowhere. And here I am now making 200 bucks a night on uh, a bunch of stations. <laughs> <laughs> but here we are, man. Let's rock and roll. Hey, how do you? What do you? Where do you get your edge? Like when you're trying to to give people picks to so let everyone know, like it, there's. A, it seems like the internet is flooded with people now that think they're experts. Like, how do you separate yourself? I'm a big, you know, sort of situational spot better, uh, and Jen. It's one thing that we do in the gambling okay. community, I always laugh about it, is we all try to play Fraser Crane, man. We all pretend we know what you guys are thinking. Uh -huh. I'm telling you, every night, tune in our show today. Well, the guys on the Lakers are going to be thinking this, and the guys are, the other one we hear, well, they don't want to go down 0-2. Who gives a shit what you want? You know, do we all get what we want in life? No, I've wanted to win the Powerball for a long time. I have it. You know this, AJ and Pat. You guys go, oh, and the other one you hear often, basically, AJ, fade the narratives. Whenever you hear another one I hear often, you hear the game community, oh, the crowd's going to be going crazy tonight. Have you guys ever lost a game because of the crowd? Like, let's be real. Yeah, well, let's that's a great question. That's a great question and a very realistic way to look at gambling and picks and your way of describing these things is why you are Gabe Marenzi yeah. out there. I mean, it is magic. What happened last night? Hey, you're, you said your dad or grandpa was in the NHL in, in Edmonton, I believe, or Montreal, I'm, I'm sorry. Last night, hey. All the same, Pat. <laughs> Canada, oh, yeah, oh, can oh. yeah, Canada. Hey, there was that was a big time shot. There came out of nowhere. Hey, hey, that's not good for the game, Gabe. Hey, uh -uh. That's not good for the game, Gabe. What's going on up there? I thought this was a gentleman's sport. Listen, my uncle played in the WHA. His team got into a brawl. It was actually the creation of the movie Slapshot. All right. So I'm all for old school hockey. I'm all for hey, let's say hit him with a stick, and I love all that stuff. But we're talking about a defenseless player here. I think the best way to put it, guys, so basically Evans scores on the Montreal Canadiens. Shifley comes barreling down the ice about 150 feet, full speed. Could have let up. It's a classic example, guys. Guy scores the touchdown. It's already been two or three seconds, man. And then you decide to level him. And not only level him, but hit him in the head. Hit him in the head as well. It was Evans' 25th birthday. Oh, happy birthday. At least he got the win. Uh, and a goal. Listen, old days, this wouldn't have happened, guys, in hockey. Because you would have got the shit kicked out of you after. But now, there's they call it the instigator rule. So if you respond after, they'll penalize the guy that responds and kills the guy for hurting somebody more than the guy did for actually hurting somebody in the first place. Hockey players in the sport of hockey used to be able to police itself. Now you got Gary Batman as, as the top cop. And now everyone just chirps, runs their mouth. Imagine, guys, if you're on a field and there's no accountability ever. You know, I can't punch this guy in the face because I'm going to get kicked out. Yeah, he just cheap shot at my quarterback and he's running his fucking mouth after and I can't do anything about it. That's the problem in the NHL right now. Okay, so I, you, you, you went through that entire beautiful picture of painting old school hockey. And by the way, I always say Sidney Crosby, the greatest player of all time, if he played back whenever Wayne Gretzky was playing and when Mario was playing, there was goons, there was people, they couldn't be 10 feet around them. Sidney Crosby gets buried every single night, Gabe. He gets no protection, and it's because of these new rules, Gabe, these fucking new rules taking down hockey. You're damn right. Listen to Pat dropping some pub kicks here. I said the same thing. Look at Wayne Gretzky had more protection than Beyonce does, all right? Literally. <laughs> Like, Wayne Gretzky had people, like, spoon-feeding him, and if you looked at him, you'd get beat up. Hey, don't look at him. As you mentioned, Sidney Crosby, I watched this kid playing growing up, Pat, in a place called Ramuski that I guarantee you, no one tuning in has ever heard of. Played for the Ramuski Oceanic before he was on the Pittsburgh Penguins. That's junior hockey. That's what I'm talking about. He was taking a motherfucking beating. He's taking a beating more than Paul is versus Floyd Mayweather, all right? Like, this kid got beat up all the time. Fought through it. You ever seen Sidney Crosby's uh, man thighs? 
They're, they're literally motherfucking tree trunks, man, this guy. Yeah. He could be a fullback. Yeah, I agree. And his grit, determination, mm-hmm. his leadership, he's, he's the guy. But now that every star in hockey is out, basically. I mean, Ovechkin, gone. See you later. How you doing? Yeah. Sid, gone. Uh, Mick Jesus, gone. I guess McKinnon in uh, Colorado still. What the, the NHL playoffs and the NBA playoffs. You said fade the narrative, so I assume you think LeBron's going to lose tonight. But LeBron could be out. Kawhi could be out. I guess the Nets could be in. The NHL, all the stars are out. What the fuck's going on, Gabe? And how do we bet this whole thing? Well, you know what's crazy, man? The league always wants New York versus L.A., whatever league it is. You're going to get it, except it won't be the Knicks and Lakers. It's going to be the Nets and Clippers. No. And people in, in New York and L.A. don't even care about the Nets and Clippers. Hey, the Clippers money. stink, don't they, Gabe? Don't, <laughs> hey, don't the Clippers stink? Uh, yeah, well, I don't know. One day they do, then the next day they don't. <laughs> yeah. Like everything in the NBA. They're, they're moodier than I am. <laughs> but, yeah. Hey, something you said there, Pat. How about this, guys? 17 of the top 18 highest paid players in the NHL are eliminated. It's a team sport. It's a team sport. Oh, Connor McDavid has 105 points in a regular season. Good for you. He got swept. It's all about performing in a postseason. It comes down to a hot goalie. And the Montreal Canadiens have that hot goalie right now in Carey Price. Four straight wins, guys, at plus money. And there's no end in sight. And how about this for a stat? We'll get serious for one second. The Montreal Canadiens with Carey Price now have won 18 consecutive playoff games if they score three or more goals. 18 straight, 24 out of the last 25. Well, they scored five last night. Unless Winnipeg's holding to less than three. Keep on cashing tickets, Canadians roll and win this series. Gumpy was saying the same thing. That seems to be the money bet at the moment. We're talking to Gabe Morenci, legend that you might not have heard of. You can hear him on Sports Grid, on Sirius XM, and also on Twitter at Sports Rage. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Gabe, can you explain to the guys in here and to all the people listening why the Bruins are going to go on and crush the Islanders tonight in the Coliseum? Yeah, you know what? I, I almost want to see it. No offense to all the Islander fans, but I'm tired of seeing you on Twitter. We get it. You like your team. Yes. Like they say, the like Islander fans get like 200 people in a room, and they're like, oh, look, look how crazy it is. There's 200 people in a fucking parking lot in Montreal watching a game right now. <laughs> like, all right, good for you. You got together and watched the Islander game together. That's cute. And I like the Islanders. I think it's a cool oh, game. Yeah, 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 Listen, I hate the fucking Boston Bruins, right? They're my natural born rivals, but I respect the hell out of them. They're going to win this series, and they're going to win this game tonight. What about hey, you mentioned? Go ahead, AJ. you mentioned uh, the Floyd Mayweather Logan Paul fight. Can we bet on that? And if are you putting anything out on it? I just can't justify it. It's like watching cable news. I don't want to give them the hits. You know what I'm saying? Like Smart. I can't do it, bro. I, I find, you know, I just, I can't go this low. I can't, I just can't go this low. What a low. fucking hero, Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Pat, you know, I've gotten in arguments with homeless people before. I've gotten pretty low before. I, <laughs> uh, I just can't, I can't do it. I don't know, are you down with his agent? Like, I love real boxing. I love the UFC. I love this stuff. I just can't, I can't, honestly... If you guys offer me 50,000, I'm not even lying. You put me in a lie detector test right now. If you offer me $50,000, I would not be able to tell you which one of these motherfuckers is Logan and Paul. They're both in the way. <laughs> Logan and Paul. Jake. Jake is the brother. Jake, yeah, yeah. Jake, Logan, Paul, whatever. They great. If you want to fight me, I'll fucking fight you guys. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Gabe, listen, we don't need you fighting anybody. We just need you to continue to talk. Um, I don't know if it's not regulated, obviously, so you can't bet it on like any of the actual sports books. I assume offshore is available. Logan Paul, hey, one punch, you know what I mean? Yeah. Nobody's ever been able to punch Floyd, ever. Really? No, That's no. kind of like Floyd's thing. But if Logan lands one, it's over, Gabe, and you're going to have to eat your work. The Paul brothers are saving boxing, uh. Gabe. They are boxing. You know what I saw? There? Jim Lampley's career got saved. I'm like, poor bastard. They're like, Jim Lampley got signed to like to, to this stuff. They to can, this wow, stuff. To the top of the Gabe. top. Jesus. Uh, Gabe, you think Braun wins tonight or no? Um, uh, I've been on Phoenix all series, Pat, so I've got two more cracks at this. I think this is the real deal, man. I think Chris Paul's tired of the bashing. I think LeBron wants to go on his, uh, his Space Jam free movie tour. 
It's lights out tonight, Pat. Phoenix, the valley rises. No! Do you think the NBA is going to let LeBron get out of the series this early in the first round, Gabe? I don't think they can stop it. I don't think they can stop it. I think Phoenix understand they need to deliver the knockout punch tonight, and I think they do. They, you know, they, Phoenix and Chris Paul, Chris Paul, remember they had the Warriors on the ropes a couple of years ago and he got hurt? This is just different this year. The Lakers aren't the same, bro. Even not Gabe, I don't know. Gabe, they were lucky hey. the Warriors. Gabe, they, I heard that crowd's going to be going crazy, though. How are they going to win? Yeah, it's really crowd. Yeah, 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 yeah. Settle down, Jack. Uh, Nicholas over there. <laughs> <laughs> The ladies and I'm sure Diane Keaton's really going to enjoy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, Gabe, we appreciate you. Uh, you know, wait, you just told me you're up till 4 a.m. You're on the left coast. You wake up and do the show. We appreciate you so much, man. Hey, it was, it was a pleasure and an honor to be with you guys. You guys kick ass. Uh, most popular show, best show, rocking in North America. As soon as your boy Aaron Rodgers tells you what he's going to do, please let me know, too, all right, so I can look smart. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Gabe, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Channel 204, by the way, he hosts yeah. Sports Rage on Sports Grid nice. Sirius XM. Hey, did you know that guy existed before that? I, dude, literally, Hammer Down was talking to him, and I was watching, and he had his bald. I think he had a hat on maybe yeah. at the time, and it like got popped up, and he was like yelling about something. I'm like, who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> and then I, I, he is all every day. He's that, by the way. That is him all day, every day. I would love to hear some homicide songs. Yeah, <laughs> but man, yes. he fade the narrative is probably a good idea in sports gambling. By the way, I mean that feels like that is the way you win in this whole thing. Uh, Diggs, he that's kind of your thing too. You're kind of a uh, a fader of what everybody else is saying. Sometimes, as well. not when it's like tonight. I won't take the Suns because I'm too scared. Like I, I I do believe that LeBron is the second greatest player of all time, and he could potentially come out and have a great game tonight, so I'm not going to do it. But. Two different sports. He's the best player of all time in this particular sport of basketball. Sure. All right. Happy we agreed to that. <laughs> Ohio guy, yeah. you, you're, you're a LeBron fan, yeah? Yeah, I'm a LeBron fan. I don't, I don't get into the GOAT argument, but yeah. Well, Mike Krzyzewski, <laughs> Krzyzewski, <laughs> Krzyzewski had a uh, press conference to announce that he will retire a year from now. Mm -hmm. His uh, press conference... The president of Duke is hilarious. Okay, oh, to yeah. look at. I, I don't know how. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> animal. That guy, we had assume, has made some terrible decisions in the past, and that is just judging him by looking at him and assuming what type. Of, we could be completely wrong, uh, but listening to these people talk about Shashevsky, he was called a goat. You know, Shashevsky said he called me a goat. At least he wasn't a donkey. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a good punchline in there. Shashevsky still got it. That's going to be a uh, Jeter year, huh? Oh. That's going to be a Jeter. They filled up all of Cameron Indoor to announce that he's going to announce his retirement a year from now. It, it's going to be wow. a big. I'm happy for Coach K out there getting, uh, you know, all the due praise that he has earned over the last 41 years. Is that what he said? Mm -hmm. Something uh, like I think, that. Yeah, going into 42. Yeah, 41 years. So I mean, obviously, like people that are diehard Duke fans, yeah, they will be on board, but everybody else will be completely against this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jeter felt like everybody was kind of on board. He got gifts from every team, and right, it was like so. a, a full, you know, the hat tip. Did he like? He didn't. It didn't seem like he like published. Like, no. it almost felt like he didn't want any of that. No, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, he, he didn't, didn't want, want the commercials. Yeah, you're right. You're right, no. AJ. God, AJ, you're such an asshole. He didn't want any of it. Yeah, no, I'm dead serious. Like Jeter, you don't. He doesn't talk to the media much. He doesn't pump himself up. Everybody else pumps him up. Now it's different that he's in the owner's role. I mean, that might have been a strategy by his media team. Maybe Good. is Good what strategy. some people say. Great strategy, by the way. Jeter's like beloved by everybody, but I don't know if Coach K will get the same reaction everywhere. I hope they at least give him a uh, way to go. Thank you. Good Thank work, you, Coach. K. Thank you, Coach. He's won our last. <laughs> Coach K's lost it a little bit here at the end, but 41 years of doing something, you could get tired of it as well. I mean, Absolutely. We, we talked about it. You know, it was very similar to the Drew Brees situation. If anyone is surprised by this, if you thought Coach K wasn't going to go out without making things about himself one last time. Oh, my uh, God. You're Come nuts. On. There it is. Drew Brees didn't deserve that. A ricochet shot just came out of nowhere. In 41 years as Duke's head coach, Come on. Olympic gold medalist, national champion, countless lives changed. He didn't deserve that at all either. I mean, they did fill up the entire place. I think they were playing his song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every time we touch by Cascada, yeah. it was kind of a. Yeah, every, every time, time we touch, touch, I get this feeling. And every time we touch, I feel alive. And then you feel a heartbeat touch. And what is the last thing you buy?
man, I miss Cameron, man. Yeah. <laughs> that must be people a dude thing, because the, they were doing like a choreographed dance yeah, in there. People on the court, I miss this. The cameras. That's Coach K. <laughs> yeah. One more run. Hey, this might all be a recruiting ploy for one last team here. One I don't know if they've run. signed their team already, uh, but I bet on Duke, you know what I mean? Yeah. I bet on Duke. You should, is, there any, is there any bets out there for uh, people saying, like, oh, he's going to regain the love he has for coaching, and he's going to say, I'm not leaving? Yeah. You know, it's kind of cool. Like, he got a chance to kind of see his funeral here, you know what I mean? They're going to have, like, yeah. two retirement press conferences. Oh, yeah. They can prepare for the next one off of this one. You know, maybe because I did hear them make the announcement. Masks, social distancing, please. Yep. They turn the camera. Everybody's in there just going absolutely bonkers <laughs> and doing their whole thing. Didn't look like they were socially distancing, but there was a lot of hand choreography that was able to be done, I guess, so they were separated, but... I think Coach K deserves all this praise, dude, honestly. He should have done this years ago when he couldn't win with Zion and Ja. Ooh, yep. Mm -hmm. Coach no, Roy ja did it better. Murray Steve, Steve, RJ Steve. Barrett. RJ Barrett. What's that? Coach Roy did it better. UNC coach. Just hung it up and walked away. You're a UNC graduate, right? Yeah. You went to one online class and got a certificate? Oh, yeah. Also Stanford, too, right? Not Stanford. No. I should do that, though. Yeah, yeah. It should be your thing, just collecting Me papers. and Andrew. Yeah, you Don't and teach Andrew a Luck. social media class. <laughs> How about Kyle Trask? You're just being not too far behind Andrew Luck uh, mentally. Seems like B.A. is just cutting promos right now. Yeah, a lot of guys are photographing memories coming into the NFL this year. You know that guy that was considered like the smartest guy maybe to ever play? This guy right here. Nobody talked about this coming in. He's not too far behind. Just yeah. like him. I have reached out to my sources in Tampa Bay to see how big of a bullshit comment that was from Bruce <laughs> Arians. I've gotten no response because all the boys are working down here. Oh, yeah. This is a classic, you know. We are supposed to have Scoot Scotty Miller on today, by the way. What? He's supposed to come what on today. What happened? What happened? Yeah, they got something. Something came up. He had either uh, I don't know if he's with Tom or with BA. If it's a lift or uh, something, he had something happen. He's he was supposed to come on for Celsius with Celsius. He's one of the Celsius athletes or whatever. Whoa. I was going to talk to him, see how this whole thing was going. Maybe we'll reschedule it. But I was going to dive in because if he's at OTAs, which I would assume he's doing OTAs and Tom's throwing sessions. Scotty Miller, I'd assume at this point he's doing both. Can you, don't you think Tom may schedule at the same time? So you got to make a choice. I love it. Now, allegedly, Bruce Arians had Tom Brady scout prospects in the upcoming draft wide receivers. They, I assume they had a list of potential weapons that they were eyeing and like. They sent it to Tom. You know, last year, Bruce told Tom, hey, you don't want to throw on Wednesday. Don't do whatever you want to do. You want to pick some players to join the team. You do whatever you got to do. This was his big issue uh, with New England. You know, I, I don't have any say. Uh, they treat me like I'm Johnny Foxborough, this, this whole thing. And after 20 years, it was going to come to a head anyways. But B.A. is now saying, and, and reports are coming out, we're having Tom involved as much as possible. Now, we are in a public heel baby face situation because Tom has his camp, I have my camp. But we're all on the same page here. We're happy Tom's here. I, I just, that team I think is going to be fucking unbelievable this year. I really do believe that they are going to be unstoppable this year. I'm with you. As long as they can stay healthy, yeah, like who is going to stop them? Yeah, they may drop a few games here or there. But you know, yeah, Tom has transformed what they are. They don't have to stay healthy, though. That's the thing about... Now, okay, your injuries need to come at the right time. Then. Key positions where they have a lot of depth. Tom can't get hurt unless Blaine Gabbert comes in, who just two weeks ago was the most underrated and underappreciated yeah. quarterback in the NFL. Then I think when B.A. found out he wasn't coming to OTAs, fuck him, Kyle Trask. <laughs> yeah. Dave, he's going to go over there. He's going to do his thing. But I think Blaine Gabbert and obviously what we're hearing from about Kyle Trask, maybe they'll be able to go in there, but Tom Brady's the difference. Every other position, though, they have depth, dude. Like, that is why accruing talent is so important, I think, in 2021. Everybody, we don't need that. We got a wide receiver core. It's like, you do until one person gets hurt. And if that person gets hurt, guess what? Defense is completely changed playing against you, and it can affect you. The Chiefs, the Bucks. They have all these weapons, so if somebody does inevitably get hurt, which they will, it's like, okay, bang, we become a new offense, and we're not losing any explosivity here. I just, I don't know. I, I feel like everybody should be trying to do it, but I, what do I know? Hey, as long as their O-line continues to play well and stay healthy, they will win a ton of games. That's the only thing that I would worry about if multiple O-linemen went down. Okay, let's get to a break here. Uh, we'll be back on the other side to wrap up this beautiful Thursday, June 3rd. Big thanks to Gabe Berenci. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you, Gabe. Gabe. You couldn't survive one week of my diet. <laughs> I don't know if anybody can. He looks good, too. I don't know. Yeah. It's a 
Man, you got some great genetics if that's what you're doing. Yeah, 4 a.m. bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. Oh, that had to be so good, by the way. Oh, oh. Incredible. Uh, you got a Dunkin' Donuts bacon, egg, and cheese croissant sandwich. Every time. Woo. Man. Is he intermittent fasting, you think? Like 4 a.m. to... Probably. Oh, yeah, probably. probably. Start, so he's probably sense. holding yeah. off till 4 a.m. Yeah, to do that whole thing. Definitely. Is that, is that your plan still? Yeah, I'm still going 4 p.m. ish to 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I really like it. I'm enjoying it. I have like a sandwich kind of daily. I get to eat whatever I want whenever I want. I'm working out a little bit, doing some boxing. I feel like I can maybe maintain this long. I think I might have found the new me. This is the new me, AJ. You're you're looking at him. I love. I saw a quick thing on that rower you got. That was not the rower I was thinking. Of. I haven't seen anything like that. Really. Was that homicide? <laughs> Oh, that was DJ Griff showing his range. Wish it was homicide. Hell yeah. Ooh. Homicide is on the loose. Uh, Driving our van, we almost hit a loose. Uh, Things going crazy, <laughs> you gotta let loose. Uh, <laughs> we're bringing the just Homicide! I love that. That's what made him quit, was hitting the moose. All right. I'm not fucking dying from the moose. <laughs> let me out. Let me out. <laughs> like it was the most out. Canadian like story of all time. Out. He slide that van door. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Takes his guitar. <laughs> <laughs> fucking done. Good, good run, boys. On to sports, Ben. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're back in four minutes. This is the Pat McAfee Show. Why are you listening and watching? We don't know, but we do appreciate you. $10,000 on the line with the ticker trivia. Woo! Go ahead and win you some money here. Also, tomorrow's vlog, the new Foxy flick. We're giving away something massive, AJ. Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow's, uh, tomorrow's vlog is a celebration. We're seven weeks into this thing. Can't wait to give it away. Can't wait to join you on the other side of this four-minute break, AJ. We'll take some phone calls. How about it? Sounds great. one 833 4 McAfee. We'll talk to you soon. going out onto the field and kicking some field goals to raise a crap ton of money for the kids. And uh, I'm about to become an old man. I said I do this, then I do this, then I do this. Oh, Kazi. Oh my God. <laughs> you want a little bit of that grandpa. Hey, you, you see you go, hey, hey, hey. I'm just so excited we can raise some money because that's what we're here for. Yeah. What's going on? Hey, oh hey, hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> it is hard to see down. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way I live this long in real life. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for our contestant and cheer him on as he attempts to raise $70,000 for cancer research. On your mark, get set, go!
can see. It's a lot more difficult to see. It's the show recommended by Zero out of five old white guys. It's the Pat McAfee Show. Welcome back to that show. Um, it's June 3rd, okay? Hell yeah. <laughs> and every star in every sport that's currently playing is eliminated. Except for the Bruins. <gasps> Bruins stink. Pa yeah, you know Pasta's is a star. He's unbelievable, that guy. Yeah. 25 years old. Uh -huh. Wears pit vipers over to Lake Tahoe. And he's unbelievable. He's the only thing that they got left. I guess McKinnon's a guy. Everybody says he's a guy. Cool. Never heard of him. Can't fucking talk about him. Let's go to, uh, there's some free agents that are still remaining, AJ. We, McKinnon didn't deserve that. You're a great player, kid. Yeah. Good job, McKinnon. You're not Sidney Crosby, but you're a great player. Sidney the cup. By the way, I seen uh, Sidney play whenever he was down there in uh, Roshubi. Yeah. Yeah. He was down there with Roshubi. Ramuski. Ramuski. Talking about that yesterday. Yeah, we were talking about, hey, whenever he was down in Ramuski, he was fucking fending off moose and mice, and, yep. and, and he was right over there with uh, next to, uh, he was near. Uh, yeah, it's near Saskatoon. Yeah, Saskatoon, how, Ranuski mm -hmm. down there. He was playing that good hockey long time. He ain't never bitch about anything. Uh, there's still a bunch of free agents. Remaining, AJ. There's a lot of big-time names that have not made decisions yet. Why is that? Are they waiting uh, for a training camp to kind of get done with? Are they trying to figure out which situation is best for them? Richard Sherman, obviously, still out there. People talked about him potentially going back to Seattle, back to San Francisco. I think New Orleans was allegedly a conversation. Melvin Ingram. I mean, he, absolute stud. He's out there. Will Compton, obviously. Let's get him on a team yeah. stat, okay? Guy is an electric factory. There's still a lot of moves to be made by a lot of people. There's players on teams right now that are allegedly supposed to move. There is no reason this has been so goddamn silent in the NFL, AJ. What is going on? I, I don't know. I mean, I, teams right now, they're trying to see what their draft picks are. They're trying to gather enough people to, to do OTAs. So, I mean, some of the, the free agents that are on this list, they're probably going to wait till camp, I guess, when there's some injuries that happen or maybe after the first week of the season, some of these guys sign. But I would imagine – a lot of these people are big-name players that can still play. Some of them got to get signed here before camp. Todd Gurley was up there in Detroit, what, last week? Did He, he yep. didn't sign? They let it, didn't. There was yeah. news today that he was that uh, Dan Campbell said he would like to sign him sooner rather than later. Oh, uh, in the helmet? I don't know if he said it in the helmet or not. but If Motor Mar City Dan Campbell announced that in the helmet, oh. I believe it. Uh, he let him out of the building. I don't know if I love that. I assume that once you met Motor City Dan Campbell and got within the den of the pride of the Detroit Lions, you wouldn't be able to make it out without signing. Todd Gurley was able to do that. Let's hope MCDC gets him up there in Detroit because that offensive line, oh. with Jared Goff's ability to hand the ball off, uh -huh. and, with Todd Gurley. Yeah. yeah. I mean, here we go. That's a good gel transaction yeah. that has worked in the past. Let's see if we can run that shit back. Ain't that right, AJ? Yeah, you think uh, is, is Jared Goff sitting up there going out and staying on his soapbox trying to get Gurley in there? Think so he's I, pushing hard for him? I think you misused the soapbox thing. I think. Well, I don't know. Yeah, when you stand on a soapbox, I think you're talking down to people and acting like they're dumb and you're smart. No, that's not always how it is. I think it is, though. Like, I think mm -mm. soapbox is. Soap. Grandstanding, soap. also another one of those yeah. things. Soapbox Grandstanding is not the same soap. as soap, staying on your soapbox, really. I think it is, though. Like, I think soapbox is a look down upon people thing. 
What is a soapbox? I think it's a box that you stand on so you can look down at mm-hmm. people. Was there ever soap in it, though? Yeah. At some point, they used mm-hmm. to store or soap. dry goods. Yeah, it, uh-huh. dry goods as well. Is, is it? It's a negative connotation, though, right? Zito, are you Googling this? Uh, yes, it's basically looking down. You basically got it right there. Yeah. Impromptu speech. So I, I, but you're talking That's about... That's everything now. That's everything now, though. Like, someone's... Looking like saying, "Hey, I have the answers. This is what I I am. And what you're, if you don't agree with me, you're wrong." Not this show. Hey, no, this no, show. I'm not saying this show, but I'm saying in society a lot that happens. Yeah, and by the way, that's why this show has the stance it has. It's like, hey, listen, there's no reason I could, I guess, get up on a soapbox, but that particular soapbox that I'm about to talk about, I don't fucking know what's inside that soapbox. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't have, I don't know it well enough to be maybe on top of it talking about it. I think I should probably bow. Not a lot of people have that anymore. You're right, AJ. They got a platform. Okay, for something, and they're very talented at something. A lot. Now I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of people. Hey, I got a platform because I'm very good at insert subject here. Well, since I'm here now, okay, cool. This is cool. I'm now a fucking expert on everything too, and it's just like, yeah, do it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That, hey, that guy that was able to uh, punt footballs just told me uh, who I should fucking vote for to run the country. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what I want. There's a lot of that. We don't do that. But I do believe the soapbox is a negative connotation. I think Jared Goff potentially showing up in the DMs, the text, Mm -hmm. recruiting. I don't think he's getting up on a soapbox, actually. I think it's the other way around. Tough position for him, too, if he is, you know, wanting to recruit and not wanting to stand on a soapbox. Because if he's saying, like, hey, we need to get this guy in here, is he kind of burying who he already has at running back? And it is kind of like um, the guy that was on – the Rams, who said Matthew Stafford, quite an upgrade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then Matthew Stafford gets, then he gets cut. Now he's back on the Lions. <laughs> yeah. He's with Jared Goff. That's a that's a situation where he was asked to get up on soapbox. Yeah. He he did his job. He spoke, did his thing. Then you know, easy come, easy go. It came right back. Yeah, right to Detroit. Yeah. If I had to guess, I think Jared Goff's asking for some receivers because we potentially have the worst receiving core in all of the NFL. Yeah, oh. but Dane Orschlovsky said best offensive line. That's right. I'm with it. Bring Gurley in. We're just handing the ball off every single time. I'm with it. Has Dane Orschlovsky been on TV lately, AJ? Where's he been? I, I don't know if I haven't been paying attention, but I don't think I've seen Dane in a while. Me neither. He's not stirring any shit anywhere on no, the internet. No, either. he's he, not. He tweeted about lacrosse, and I think they're like, all right, Dan, let's uh, let's get you out of here. Lacrosse kills rating. Destroys. Craft is in He's from, like, can, did he play? He's from, like, Connecticut, right? Yeah, he looks like a lacrosse player, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Big time. Yeah. Play what, midfield or something. What does that mean, by the way, what yeah. I just said? Tall, lanky, you know, in shape Athletic. so you can run a lot. Uh, okay. Uh-huh. I, the way you said that and the other people said yes, it's not like that was the description of who plays lacrosse. For, I mean, for the position Dan would be playing, absolutely. He goes on a lot of ball hunts. Uh, yeah, a lot for of practice, ball he's a gritty player. Oh, yeah, work on his conditioning. Do you guys, is that like the, the freshmen have to do the ball hunts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whoever's the, you know, the on the bottom of the totem pole. That's kind of how you earn your keep. Hey, go try to find this impossible to find thing in about, I don't know, 7,000 yards worth of woods here. Yeah, and everyone else just gets the ones that are close, and then they just kick that one ball around for a while so they don't have to pick up all the other uh, ones. It's a little game. Arbitrarily searching. There it is. Always finding a ball, though. Uh huh. Interesting. Got one, Coach. Let's go to uh, let's go to Dan in Pittsburgh. What's going on, Dan? Hey, Pat. What's up? Just Love the show. Oh, Listen thanks. for a long time. Live in Pittsburgh. I actually saw you guys live in Homestead when you came down. Shazier, awesome show. Stand up is hilarious. I love all you guys a ton, but... Thank you. Hey, Dan, yeah. thank you. Fun oh, night. Yeah. Homestead, by the way, we had to do something in there that was... I don't know if there's a uh, statute of limitations or whatever. We had to add, like, 50 seats, just, like, sit-down chairs because of everybody that was trying to get in there. We packed this place out. Did not expect to, by the way. Very, very thankful it for... It was packed. It was... Pa- that was the most packed building I think I've ever been in in my entire life. That was a... Scientists, doctors, not COVID nightmare. That place, people oh, yeah. were on top of each other. <laughs> that was an electrifying night. We we had Shazier come onto the stage. He walked mm-hmm. on the stage, surprised at the end. The pop might still be the loudest I've ever heard. It was like Stone Cold Steve Austin's glass break back in the day. Thank you for coming out, Dan. We're gonna hit the road again, by the way. Trying to figure out the proper way to do that. We appreciate you. What do you want to talk about? Looking forward to that. That was an awesome pop. Love the show. It but what I want to talk about was. Uh, some big fat stooge called in the other day Whoa. and it's been playing on like the repeat on the breaks. He asked for a moment of silence for uh, Zach Wilson's first like two to three years of his career. Oh, yeah. And I just want to come on and say he's a big fat stooge and totally wrong. Zach Wilson's about to 
completely destroy it, and the Jets are a way better landing spot than anybody's giving them credit for. Way better than Jacksonville, even. And I think Zach Wilson is a better prospect than Trevor Lawrence. Okay, so. just real quick, Dan, real quick. Are you a Jets fan, or are you just a, uh, you like uh, your own PFF? Do we got, like, Dan fo- football focus? Do you watch a lot of film? Where, where, how, where's this passion come from for Zach Wilson? I am deep in dynasty football, but I am a Patriots fan. Shout out Boston Corner. In Pittsburgh? Okay. Are you from Pittsburgh? Yeah. No, I was raised in Maine. So okay, not right, right, right. I was about to say, I was about to fucking hang up on you. <laughs> dynasty <laughs> football? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, what dynasty football? He's talking about the Patriots, I think, right? Is that oh, what you're yeah. saying? Oh no, like uh, it's like fantasy Keepers. football, but you keep the league. guys, so you dynasty just draft league. rookies. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's you're a like a GM? Fun. Wow. Yeah. It's yeah, crazy. exactly. So like, so you, you watch know. film on rookies, and you draft like six rounds of just rookies. So why, it's a lot of fun. Why do you think the Jets are a much better landing spot than Jacksonville? Do you see that building they're building for Trevor Lawrence yeah. and Urban Meyer down there and Tim Tebow? Are you kidding yeah. me? It's nice, it's nice, but like in New York, nobody's paying attention. They might have had the best draft of the year with Zach Wilson, and then they moved up in the first to get Elijah Vera Tucker, who's like the best guard in the in the whole draft. And so that whole left side of the line is all I think complete. that's not determined yet. I'm excited to see if Dan's right or whatever. Jacksonville, though, hey, Schlegs got a new playground. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hey, Con was like, you know what, Schlegs. You need a little bit more room to do your stuff to make these Jaguars uh, the king of the jungle, you know what I mean, and, and Super Bowl champs. We'll build it all for you. And the way it was spun, which is beautiful, is the Jacksonville Jaguars continue to invest in the city of Jacksonville building uh, a hotel. I believe yep. they're going to have uh-huh. Four Seasons Hotel in there. Let's they're just, revitalizing the whole downtown. I agree. They're Absolutely. They're doing it strictly for the good of the city. You know, they're not raking in all the money <laughs> mm. for anybody that goes to a... This is a brilliant business move. Okay, I talked about this with Patriot Place, uh, with Lombardi Place mm-hmm. or whatever it is. These teams just building up the area around the stadium so that fans, whenever they come in for games or come to games they can just stay in the hotel we'll get all their room service money we'll get all their travel money we'll get their their food and drink we'll give them shit to do here's some stores here's a casino in some places this is big business this is a really good idea i'm happy jacksonville has this happening with their owner i wish you know other owners would choose to do the same it makes it electrifying but i like the spin that they're investing in the city it's like no 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 they're actually figuring out a way to collect all of the fucking money yeah, yeah. in the entire city which by the way good business move good business move i like they're doing this for schlegs though have you talked to him about it i know he's excited about the plans i've heard about wait i don't know how long it's going to take to build this monstrosity but yeah it's of course everything you do it because they need to make they want to make money and they want to make more money but it benefits all of us. It benefits anybody that's a fan that's ever around Jacksonville because then they're, they're creating all of these different opportunities and situations that we can go enjoy. Well, Jack's Beach is down there. It's awesome. Okay, I was, I was, uh, we played in the Gator Bowl. Had a couple of nights out there. Oh, nice. Ooh. Yeah. I jumped nice. over a garbage can, actually. Uh, like, just run, jump over a garbage can in front of officer of law on a horse. Yeah. That's how I proved I wasn't underage or drunk. Here we go. <laughs> He gave me a round of applause. Wow, so I was going to say, what did he do? Yeah, yeah. let's keep it moving. Standing we, up. Have a nice night. It was very awesome. <laughs> I, I enjoyed Jack's Beach a lot, actually. Been there a couple times. They have another, like, shopping area that's really nice. I think I went to. They have a couple very good restaurants. I don't know if I know Jacksonville well enough, but anytime around the stadium there's walkable bars and restaurants, it's just a cool thing. It becomes a bigger deal. It becomes a, a mass. That's why Indianapolis is so awesome, by the way, because everything is walkable. It's like the whole city is almost like where a lot of other places are going, because some stadiums are out in the middle of nowhere. Arizona. Like, Arizona can't do this about where their stadium is, probably. It, they could, though, I think. It's just so far away. Like, they could. But it would probably need, like, they need every, the area around it to build up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what they do. That's what these people are doing, is they're building up the areas around. Like, the Patriots, for instance, in Foxborough, that's so far, that's through a neighborhood, too. Everybody talks about Lambeau, but when you drive into Foxborough, you're driving through a neighborhood as well to oh, get yeah. there, and then all of a sudden you turn in, and it's just like, all right, mass holes everywhere, mm-hmm. and you're probably going to lose by the way this is like one of the best home field advantages in the nfl he's building up like a plaza a hotel a casino there it's like movie theater yeah it's genius because you get these people that travel this game it it gives them something to do and spend more money and i guess jerry jones did that too out there where he built the stadium uh they're out in the middle a little bit in arlington i think it's in arlington they're out a little bit there's like an entire plaza on the other side it's smart because that's where you can get the best land 
like where it's cheaper. It's like where airports huge, are. I'm sure you get huge tax breaks when it's out, you know, when it's out a little bit ways. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, Bob Kraft might be the, yeah. the guy behind all of this. For oh, yeah. I mean, especially when you look at the per home game revenue that those, I mean, just the Cowboys and the Patriots are reeling in. It's ridiculous. You think that counts everything? The hotel is connected to yeah. the jerseys. Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. The restaurants. It has to. That Patriots one's really fucking yeah, nice. Yeah, super unbelievable. Nice. It is really, really, really. I feel like they're the model. They they built the model that other teams are trying to get to. And Jerry, I don't know who was first though. Who the first I heard of it was the Patriots, but Jerry probably. Yeah, I think they were right around the same. Because Jerry and Kraft are doing all the talking, right? If 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 my understanding of how things go in the NFL business wise, just back to the CBA and the TV deals and everything, feels like Jerry and Kraft have a lot of. Uh, Maybe say, and maybe it's because they're the most innovative business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They do that whole thing. I, I would assume other owners have great ideas as well when it comes to a lot of things, but it feels like Kraft and Jerry are the ones that are really trying to innovate. Now, old buddy down in Carolina, who's the wealthiest guy, he, I wonder if he'll get involved in this thing. Like, I, As more, I don't want to say self-made billionaires, because that's not a real thing. There's been a lot of people who've probably been stepped on on the way up there at some point, and then there's a lot of help in that whole thing. As more innovative and younger owners come in, I assume it's not just going to be the Jerry and Kraft world, but it feels like Jerry and Kraft are always the ones that are like, hey, this is how you do it. This is how we make all the money mm -hmm. if we continue to do it. That's this. why I thought like SoFi Stadium would have a lot more stuff just immediately around it for people to do. Whereas I do they not have it there? I don't. I don't think I don't so. Say it's very. Yeah. I know it's close to LAX, but I think out there it's also very like there. There's nowhere to like Land. build. You know what I mean? Like all yeah. that stuff is already. Well, it was it supposed and, to be what a two billion, and it became like an eight billion. Yeah, something yeah. like they build, that. They didn't they build a bunch of restaurants and stuff like that around the stadium? I would assume, and in the stadium, I think the NFL Network has its studio in there. Yeah, they yeah. have a lot of stuff like inside the stadium. But when it comes to like hotels and just like one area to so stay. the Vikings' new stadium, that place is gorgeous. They got a yeah. bunch of shit connected. I think it connects to the city. I, I was gonna say, isn't that right in the heart of downtown? It's mm -hmm. negative twenty. When well, Detroit Minneapolis build, is connected, like Indy. Yeah, but Minneapolis actually has like skywalks. They have the skywalks, yeah. yeah. All the stadiums I think are connected. Yeah, it's awesome. Except for maybe the baseball field. You're but in, cool. Minneapolis is a mall. Yeah. You're just walking around an entire mall, okay? You park, then you where are you going? Oh, I'm going to my office. Where's it at? Well, it's like down past the uh Sparrow and then right at Nordstrom <laughs> and then my accounting firm is down there cuz it's so fucking cold. Mm -hmm. They they basically built the city to be connected. I think that is what a lot of these stadiums are probably going to aim to do. Were you going to say something? I thought uh, Foxy was... Yeah, when saying. Detroit be built Little Caesars Arena, they had an issue. They built restaurants inside the arena. So people weren't watching the game down there in the seat, so it looked like an empty arena. They're actually watching it in the restaurants inside the arena. Yeah, they should just be happy people are buying tickets. I agree. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> let's, go to, uh, let's go to Eric in Pennsylvania here. Eric, what's going on, bub? What's up, Pat, AJ, and the boys? Hey, just hanging out, man. What do you want to talk about? So uh, yesterday you, had, you were talking about Bill Power. And uh, the respect that he has, not only in Pittsburgh, but in the league as a whole. Well, Mike, Mike Tomlin is about uh, four, four wins away from passing power and about 54 wins from passing Chuck Knoll. You think if Tomlin becomes the winningest coach in Steelers history, he finally gets the respect he, he deserves? Uh, great question, Eric, and I appreciate your appreciation for Mike Tomlin. He's unbelievable, always has a winning record. Yenzers do get a little bit spoiled because Steelers have been good for so long and there's only a, a couple head coaches. Tomlin's greatness will be recognized when he's retired, just like Noel and Carr, but you're right. They, he does not get anywhere near the amount of credit he deserves, and it's because of Yenzers like Tony Dix. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, it's because of that guy right there. Right here. I've never said a bad word about Mike Tomlin. Yeah, you show. love Mike Tomlin, but I'm just saying, like, people like you, though. You know what I mean? No, like, no, no. Yenzer's diehard like Steelers me. fan. Yeah, you hate Juju, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Well, big difference between those two individuals. I agree completely. But Tomlin is not appreciated. Just like, by the way, Tomlin nowhere near appreciated as much as he should. LaFleur is another guy. Yeah. They know where, there's a couple head coaches out there that just kind of, I guess because they don't, have the relationship with the media that some people have they don't ever get talked about and they'll all get appreciated when they're done hopefully that's kind of how everything works in this caldwell world. jim caldwell yeah dude mm -hmm. yeah. detroit ran him out of town aj patricia marvin Thank lewis you. What? marvin lewis is another guy whoever yeah. gonna win with the Bengals? okay you're a cincinnati fan and they hate that i talk about this and i brought this to the light as much as i possibly can do you see those Jacksonville drawings? Yes. yes. Do you, that's what the Jacksonville Jaguars are doing for their team, okay? Because Urban Meyer comes in and says, 
Millionaire remodel. Mm-hmm. Right, Big cock. Urban Meyer's loved in Ohio, right? Probably loved in oh, Cincinnati. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Urban Meyer showed up at the Cincinnati Bengals organization, be their head coach, and he saw that there was no indoor facility. He would not have signed a fucking contract, okay? The Bengals not having an indoor facility while Jacksonville's building a city down here for the Jags. <laughs> it is just, uh, that's the NFL, baby. And if the Joey Burrow-led Bengals can win games in that AFC North, that is... Going to be tough, especially with the way Lamar's slinging the rock already with uh, Sammy Watkins out there. <laughs> I mean, that is just something. If I was a Bengals fan, I would demand a little bit better. Wouldn't you, AJ? Would you? I mean, I think you are single-handedly keeping this thing alive about the indoor facility. But unfortunately for Cincy, awesome. I don't think they have the room around the stadium to build this Jacksonville-type structure. Oh, yeah. I saw a guy two highways over give me the uh, a, a cell phone video, Joey Burrow throwing the ball 70 yards. That's right. Uh-huh. They do have a sweet area yeah. between the baseball stadium and the football stadium. But yeah. no indoor facility. Hmm. Just build it in the suburb. Can Pete Rose not donate enough money for the Bengals to build? <laughs> Make a bad okay. hit, Pete. <laughs> Pete Rose is asking for money. No, he's not. Pete Rose did not autograph sign. I saw 25, 40 people there four hours into it out in Vegas. That's I would have right. stopped by, but I had places to go. But it was great to see him working out there. We tried to book him on the show. Yeah. His fee. <laughs> Could not afford it. Yes. Good for him. AJ, anything <laughs> um, to say to the Sirius XM listeners before Chris Mad Dog Rooster and Mad Dog Unleash happens six minutes doing? after this break? Uh, Pete Rose. I'm you sure you don't know his name. His nickname is Charlie Hustle. He That dude gave it all. So he was Pistol's favorite player as he, when he was a kid. And I love Pete Rose as a player. <laughs> Pete Rose, the player. Big coach. Buckeye fan, too. He'll give you the IO back. OH! Nah, Pete may. If you pay him, he may give it back. Well, that's because he's a real Buckeye, unlike A.J. Hawk. Chris Mad Dog is a hey, real hey. sports talk show host, unlike me. We'll be on the other side of this six-minute break. Massive Friday coming tomorrow. Be yeah, a friend. Yeah. Tell a friend. Cheers. That was pretty good. A little close. Not bad. Oh, yeah. Buried some people. Mm-hmm. A.J. Really? A.J. mostly. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. True. I buried people? Yeah. Big time. Who? All of Ohio State, when you refuse to say I.O., I've gotten oh, more no. than four. Get off of it. <laughs> I've gotten more than four tweets from people telling me <laughs> that no self-respecting Buckeye would ever leave an O.H. unanswered, mm-hmm. That's right. regardless of the tone of the O.H. I think you're potentially getting voted out of your tribe, pal. I don't even know if you know it. I don't even know if you know it. Well, I don't think those people are fans of the show. They must not watch the show. There's a lot of context be- behind this, the reason why I don't give it back to you. What? By the way, a lot of people I've been hearing hate our show, watch mm-hmm. our show, hate our show, Yeah. find themselves watching show more, enjoying <laughs> show more, you know, doing that type of thing. A lot of people not in our demo that's starting to happen to, by the way. Really? Pretty cool. Let's go. Those people know that you've been fucking over Ohio State for months now. Yep. You hear me? With what you've said about the 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 absence of I the non IO, the AIO. You can try okay. to, to bully me here through FaceTime, but it's not gonna happen. You're not gonna wear me down. Let's go to Tyler. I know a guy, Pat, I know a guy that did that to the whole stadium. So you're not, that's not <laughs> me and you, we can't do anything. Did Odell do that left-handed? I'm not sure. Uh, you tell me. Uh-uh. Do it again. Uh, <laughs> zoom out. Can you zoom yeah, out? Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm... Oh! Oh, 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 Look at you framed it. You got to the throw is hard too. You know what I mean? This is like when you're sitting on your bed and you have to sh- oh, yeah. shoot a ball up uh-huh. and you try to keep it straight. That was always tough. Very tough. Especially when, if, if you lose it, it's a pain in the ass. Well, and also if you're trying to just like kind of Nick yep. the ceiling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's always difficult. Oh! <laughs> Stop putting it behind your head. I didn't. That's how I caught it. It was coming down so fast. It was okay, yeah, do it ball. again. See it. Do it again. From Eli Manning, dude. Eli. Oh! He caught it! Oh. He caught it! <laughs> Shit! Jeez Louise, dude. That was fingertips, dude. Yeah. I don't see fucking Rich Eisen doing it. <laughs> hey, are those, uh, That's are those sweatpants? Thing. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, dude? Are those sweatpants? No, they're real tight, though, aren't they? These ones. I see the elastic. Is there elastic at the bottom? No, I just um, I cuffed them. Okay. That's like old school, by the way. I think people if you used found to... like if you found sweatpants that look like jeans that much, I was gonna say I need a link. Yoggers, you can get some uh, bird dogs, dude. Mm-hmm. Really? These are not bird dogs. These are another company. Mm-hmm. They're like you know they're built for the action balls. Mm-hmm. But they're yeah. a little too tight. Like I got a. Uh, you know what I mean, these are size thirty six too. <laughs> No big deal. <laughs> you know what I mean? The, is that big or small? 
What do you think, dude? I'm not a child. I've been wearing a 38 since I'm like fucking 14 years old. Well, that's because your legs. Like I gotta do the same thing. I gotta buy them big and take the waist there. Oh, so you get a tailor to do it? That's because you're, you know, you're in your 15,000 yeah. square foot thing. Not right, me. Huh? I just, I just use the big old belt, pal. You know what I mean? Look at this thing. Look at this thing. I know. I have one of those. Actually, I had to borrow it. I have one in my closet. You one of your white belts? Yeah, dude. It's so long though. I gotta change my whole. Life. Being healthy, guys, is not easy. No, yeah. no, it's not. <laughs> not easy. What's that, AJ? You got a problem? It's, you make it look easy. Dude, you have no idea the struggles of having to have like three different wardrobes, clothes that you can maybe wear, clothes you can no longer wear. Mm -hmm. Summer's coming, but you got to be in it. And it's, by the way, 100% my fault because I do crash diet and move this whole thing. But once you get down small, you're always like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to stick with this because all your clothes are better. Mm -hmm. You know, clothes are better. They fit better. You feel better. But then all of a sudden, you know, you have one little pizza. You know? That was pretty good. Oh, my God. Wow. I mean, how have I not done this for a long yeah, time? And then sad. that leads into the next morning. Oh, French toast. Mm -hmm. Excuse hey. me. Hey. 24 hours. This ain't no problem. Then you get a sandwich. Oh, I'll put Ooh, some shredded lettuce on it. Don't mind if I do. Oh, my God. And then you kind of get into the whole thing, and it just starts going. And all of a sudden, you're back in the old wardrobe again. And it's like, yeah. God damn it. It's going to take so long to get back down there. But... The ride back to the top of the elevator was worth it with the French, uh, French toast, cinnamon rolls, uh, pizza, uh, sandwiches. So, what? Uh, Shred shredded lettuce, uh, you said? Shredded lettuce shredded is a big lettuce. deal. And no free shout outs here. Is that what gets you fat when you put shredded lettuce yes. on your sandwiches? So the issue is Domino's has an Italian sub. Mm -hmm. Really? Oh, yeah. They put banana, pe or, uh, yeah, banana peppers on it and all this other shit on it. Get that off. Uh huh. Okay. Yep, ask agree. ask for nothing, just the meat in the toasted thing. You get shredded lettuce at, at the store in a little square. They, it stays fresh for maybe seven hours. So long. Seven. No. 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 no, no. <laughs> as soon as you use brown, the complete opposite. Oh. You know, the whole bag turns brown as soon as you open it. You say seven days. You know, hours. No hours. Oh, okay. You okay. open that thing. You you might as well use the whole bag on whatever you're doing because it will not be good tomorrow. That thing is going to be E. coli city mm. tomorrow, whatever. But you get that Domino's thing. Ask for none of it. Put mayo on top of the meat. Uh -huh. Use that as an adhesive. Then you grab that chilled shredded lettuce from the fridge and you just douse it on top of there. Oh, the crunch, the taste, the savory. Oh, it's the best in the world. Yeah, that is what takes me up. It is the added shredded lettuce that takes me right back into, hey, fat guy on the internet. That happens all the time, AJ. It's a tough battle. I'm out here, I mean, I'm in the middle of it right now. I think I found it with this intermittent fasting, but it's not easy, especially when that shredded lettuce gets involved. It's, I mean, how annoying is it for Sam living with you, or is she doing the same thing as you? No, no. Sam just Sam lives her life. I live mine. Good. Good Sam her. lives her. I live. I live mine. She. I don't think it's annoying for her at all. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I'm sure. No, on the contrary, actually, when I'm trying to like not be a complete fat doofus, yeah, she'll have this spread of just like oh, oh my God, there's deep fried Oreos. Ooh. There is chocolate chip, homemade chocolate chip cookies. There's cinnamon rolls just sitting there. And as soon as I wake up, it's just like, oh, cheat day today. Yeah. And you can't do that every single day, though, you know? So it's, uh, yeah. she, she runs her race, I run mine, but they do intersect every once in a while, and it's tough. It is tough for me every once in a while. That's good. I mean, she, she likes you the way you are. She doesn't want you to have to lose a bunch of weight. I think that's a good thing. Oh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That barbecue is definitely going to fall and splatter everywhere soon. Well, the thing about that catch is it's difficulty. If I caught every single one, yeah. obviously you would lose the respect for the catch. Right. Everybody be doing it. Everybody be doing it. That's a show, dude. There's a couple people. Tyler, Charlotte, what's going on? We got to get on a plane. What's going on, Pat? Thanks for having me on. Your own plane? Today? Did you buy it? It's not like Meekum, dude. I, I, it's going to take a couple weeks. Takes, from yeah. It takes some time. Hey, send, me some, send me some pictures of what you're looking no. at. I want to see it. Let's be honest, I don't have the exact picture of what we're looking at, but I've been told about it, and the story is good. Yeah. I wanna, yeah. I wanna, tell, I wanna, me the, tell me the make and model, all fair. I'll tell you on air what it is. Yeah. G7? Dassault. Oh, oh, Falcon. Oui, oui. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oui, yeah. oui. Dassault, huh? Falcon. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> it seems to be bigger, but doesn't <laughs> cost as much. I don't know why. Probably not You're the talking best. talking old buddy with the, the three engines? Oh, yeah, we got a couple engines up there just in case one goes. 
uh, Pepe Le Pew on itself. <laughs> uh-huh. You know what I mean? I was trying to figure out how many French. By the way, I was a French, right? Oh, yeah. Just date raping everybody. Oh, yeah. yeah. You Big guys time. let that fly. You guys all watched that. Not probably. me. I did not watch any of that shit. You guys all let that was shit Was he fly. really? Me. What? I mean, we were five, so. Yeah, but also. Uh, he was roofing people? You like knew cartoon? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, he was using his skunk stuff to get people, to get other skunks to want to have sex with him. No, that's mm-hmm. pheromones. Yeah. But yeah. Like eating oysters. He's Bill French, Cosby. though. He was French, though. What did Cosby say? I said he's basically Whoa. like Bill Cosby. Pepe Le like Cosby. <laughs> yeah. Goodness, Cosby, there's still a call yeah. Him. Cosby did not get parole, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> you I, don't say it. Hey, Jerry, what's on the mind, pal? <laughs> Tyler's his name. Yes. <laughs> Have some respect. <laughs> so I didn't know if I was, I didn't know if I was still minutes. on or not. I was just sitting here laughing at you guys. Tyler, uh, we appreciate no, you, man, couple, dude. <laughs> I appreciate you having yeah, me on. Yeah, I got a couple here, quick things. One real quick one, and then we got to address the elephant in the room. First one, I think if Aaron Rodgers would have let Miles Teller know what Sneaky Ninja meant, TMZ would be reporting two assailants Scary. with a black eye, not Scary Miles Scary Ninja, no. Tyler, but I do like what you're talking about, pal. I knew it was close. Anyway, the, so what I want to talk about, the most important thing here, the thing that everyone is missing is out on this Tim Tebow conversation. The thing that no one is talking about, I think it's the most important thing that we should be talking about. Tim Tebow took a team to the playoffs, beat the Steelers in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Tim Tebow did this as a virgin, baloney bopping only for Jesus. Preach. That's a in good his point. hiatus from the NFL, he has came bopping, back, friend. he is married, oh, yeah. he has found the vertical smile. We're going to see Tebow that's Jesus. been out there getting laid. Jeez. All right, Tyler. Wow. See, that's vertical the type of analysis smile. you know that you don't get anywhere else. This show, Tyler Charlotte. That guy was disgusting. You're right, Diggs. You're 100% right. Because you've been a virgin this whole time. Look at what you've been able to accomplish. Exactly. Bingo. We don't know mm-hmm. Tebow's had sex. We do know, yeah. No, we don't know. You gotta he didn't consummate confirm the marriage. You gotta yeah. consummate the marriage yeah. in the Bible. You have to. He took his parody ring off as well, so. Yeah, but he seems like a guy you can't leave it on the floor. It's only for babies. Yeah, true. Mm hmm. Yeah. No, I had a. I, I know somebody, a good friend who was. He was Catholic. He's deep in the Catholic religion. After he had a bunch of kids, he had to. Go, he legit went to a priest to ask permission to have a vasectomy. And that priest, by the way, definitely has never done anything absolutely despicable no. in his life or in, in the entire thing. So good. he I'm gave. Glad you cleared that up. I did. Yeah, that particular one. I know who you're talking about. And God told the Pope, who told the Cardinal, who told the priest to tell old buddy. It's all right to do whatever you got to do now, right? Is that what happened? I guess, yeah, that's that's how it went. Did they allow him? Is he allowed to? I, I'm pretty sure he got clipped, so yeah. Did he do it through the screen or did he go face-to-face? The the uh, vasectomy or the priest? The question to have uh, pipes cut. Oh, probably through the old the little gate, you know. Yeah, does anybody go face-to-face in there? Not these days. Oh, yeah, they used to make you do it in mm-hmm. grade school. Really? Yeah, my, mm-hmm. my kids did. Because I remember CCD uh, on oh, yeah. Saturdays or whatever. Yep. They would, uh, we went in, it, the big lead up this one particular year was we're going to go talk to old buddy. You know what I mean? And they said, uh, you can choose to go behind the screen or you can go face to face and just admit everything to this random person you've never fucking met before. And uh, I'll tell you what, at the end of that year, they were trying to bully me to go face to face. I stayed right on the other side of that screen. Yeah. And I didn't tell him shit, by the way. It was going to hard to get it out of me because I thought he was reporting directly to God. And why am I telling him what I did wrong? And they were like, well, he can forgive you. And I'm like, I don't think you should. You know what I mean? There's, uh-huh. there's some things I did this the year. <laughs> I don't think you should. So it's something to think about. Did anybody go face to face? You had to go face to face? Yeah. Uh-huh. Man, I just assumed everybody in my class lied right to the teacher and said, yeah, we went face to face. Yeah, what were you doing? So disrespectful to the caller. No, I want to see if I still had the soft hands, dude. Well, turns out. You, I mean, what's the verdict? Do you hear the fucking golf ball clanking? Yeah. Jay, mute this mic. Sounds like a tin can banging off oh, the wall. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hockey season's over, dude. 364 days to the next hockey season. So Let's get ready right I'll now. Get better by then. 31 uh, years until your golf season begins. Yes. Um... How's that move coming out of the pocket? That's what I was about to say. I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you, AJ. <laughs> this swing does seem to be repeatable. Now, Here we go. I do not have a fitted set of clubs, although... A repeatable I'll... hook right into the left woods every time. No, no, no. 
I'm going to shape shots like I'm fucking Bob Ross, dude. Okay, it's going to look like a painting out there. You know what I mean? It's just going to... And if it's a dog leg right, guess what? Let that elbow get a little bit looser, pal. <laughs> that thing's going to go the other way. You're in trouble, dude. You're in trouble. $20 million. Yeah. Can't wait. That thing could be an egg. That's what... Do you guys do that is there, no, is there any tape on that stick? Well, me and Sid don't use a lot of tape. Because we just like the wood on ball. Sounds like, it's, sounds like it's metal, even though it's carbon fiber, not wood down there. All right, shut the fuck up. It, it, <laughs> all right, AJ, it was not. It was not. There's uh, no wood down there. That's so, taped up. This is this is from uh, Eddie Olchek's son. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was asking if there was tape because it, it sounded like it was clanging off a metal girder. Yeah, this was used in a game, dude. This stick scores goals. Yeah. Okay. It did score goals, yeah. I played goalie against this team. Full pads on the ice for some. Uh, How was that? That would be it's for Wrangler. So fun. Yeah, it was. I, would, I don't know. I did it in Wrangler. It was a part of our uh, Pacers were going to sue me campaign. You remember that? <laughs> <laughs> I was doing all these things in Wranglers because they had this new like um, multi stretch mm -hmm. gene that they wanted to promote. So I dunked a basketball. I went and played goalie. We did something else. Pretty good. Hey, pretty good commercial concept to be honest with you. I, I, but playing goalie in there, it's just like you you put your feet back in rollerblades. My entire knee down cramped as soon as I got in there. Yeah. And I, they had, the precision these dudes had, and this was the Indy Fuel, they were hitting me right in the cup every time they wanted to. Jeez. I'm just talking, they, they lined up in a, a like a, a half moon almost, and they just whack, and four guys straight, dick, 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 dick. I mean, it was up. It was unbelievable. I stunk so bad. I don't know how anybody does it, but the stick that uh, lit me up the most was this one right here. Got it signed, put it in the, uh, put it in the studio. You know what I mean, AJ? Didn't they take shots at your neck too? Yeah. That's like the most, the scary one for me is if you're looking up and somehow your, your deal's not there, it hits you right in the Adam's apple. Catch one of the jugular. Mm -hmm. Don't wanna do that. You gotta be careful. Let's go to Ben in Michigan. What's going on, Ben? Hey, Pat. What's up, Ben? Hey, how's it going, man? I'm all right, dude. Pretty, I got pretty good hands with the hockey stick. That feels pretty good. I got a golf shot that is um, <laughs> replicable, or replicable. So okay. I feel like I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna win twenty million sooner than later. Things are going well over here. How about you, Ben? How are you doing today, man? What you do this morning? Anything cool? Hey, I'm a, I'm a virtual advisor at an elementary school district in Michigan. Uh, so What's that? You guys, mean? get me through. Uh, well, um, for this year, it means the kids that are at home because they didn't want to come in because of COVID, I'm in charge of them. Okay, so like advisor, so, advisor, you're like helping with life or school? So are you at home too? Uh, no, I have an office in the building, but like none of the kids in the building really know me because I just work with the kids at home. But yeah, I, I, I talk to their parents more than the kids. I like help them out with their work and stuff, but I don't do any instruction. Okay, like, so quick question. When I was in yeah. fifth grade, okay, I was slanging cigarettes. If you were the advisor at the school, I mean, they tried to expel me and send me to like boot camp and all this stuff. You know sure. what I mean? My mom had to go to battle. What are you talking about, dude? Fifth grade? You're selling, fucking... you're selling smokes in fifth grade. Yeah, you probably should go away for a while. <laughs> are you talking? Are you kidding me? See, that's not the way you should view it. My mom had to go to battle. Like, obviously, he's she's an... a great woman. She stood up for her. She knew her son was dead wrong, and she stood up for him. That's what family is. <laughs> I wasn't smoking it. She wasn't that. But, I mean, you, you got to. I mean, that was a pretty good hustle, dude. All right, at fifth grade, that's a pretty good little hustle. They well, all, they all hated me in good, school. A lot of good hustles in prison. Not in fifth grade, though, dude. Like fifth grade. I know you're bro. on your way, though. You were on your way. You were on the path. Listen, I've been, you know, I got suspended that whole thing. But sending me to some school like a year, or an hour or two away was the fix. I don't know if that's the right yeah. fix. I was watching uh, Dale Jr. He has a podcast. I was watching some clips on YouTube. He got sent away to like a military academy. It did not look fun, but. The intimidator, his pop said, I don't I do not care. It was, what was he it doing? straightened him out. What was he doing? I don't know. He didn't he said he wasn't like doing anything crazy or bad. He was just kinda like a goofball trying to get attention in class and stuff. See? I was just hustling, dude. What do you want from me? Yeah. I, don't send me out to the military. I don't need so, to be. So Pat, what was your question? What did you want me to answer for? What would you have done in that situation? Would you have said, Hey, this kid's smart, let's maybe get him to sell some books or something he got here? He got mad we were having a conversation. Is that what you would have done, Power? Or would you have tried to get I me out of there? Put you 
I'd probably encourage you to be our like head salesman for like our Scholastic book fairs. See, that's what I'm talking about, Genius. AJ. Yeah. Look at you quitting on kids in Ohio. Look what Ben's doing in Michigan. Okay, <laughs> Those book fairs are awesome. Too. Unbelievable. You're Come right, on. Scholastic. Oh my God. Let's have a fifth grader be our head sales rep. <laughs> I was moving no, shit that was kids. tough to sell. The kids, like, AJ. Half smoked cigs with lipstick on them out of somebody's fucking ashtray, dude. <laughs> yeah. 50 cents. Get out of that here. That would go more. I'm sure that would go for more. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how the mom felt either. She's probably like looking for her smokes every night. <laughs> you were worse than big tobacco. Me? Yeah, yeah. getting kids hooked. You killed people. No, these kids were going to smoke whatever anyways. Yeah. I just so <laughs> happened to profit off it. All right? It all almost came crashing down, though, I will say. Yeah. That was a scary day. I thought it was done. I had an entire carton in my backpack. I, mean, I was getting a little bit confident. I was getting a little bit confident. A little bit too confident. Business was booming. I mean, it what was. are you supposed to do? You got you to gotta be available for these people. And by the way, if I would have been in Nick's elementary school as well, which I did have sales in other schools, yeah. okay, there was other meetups and everything like that. If I would have moved into Nick's school at the time, because the amount of cigs they were smoking Much over there. Much more scummy school than ours. I'll probably buy a house. What are you yeah. talking about? Hey, okay, uh, listen. Half the kids on your side of town ended up in jail. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah. Oh, 75% yeah. of yours. Yeah, not my fault, though. Okay, I just want to let you know. I seen the situation, and I said, how can I get extra grape juice after lunch yes. that costs 50 cents without having to ask Tim or Sally for 50 cents? It was easy. Butts, dude, just selling mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Just selling them out there. Nothing like it. This, I seen the person that got me caught. I seen it. Outdoor recess behind the dumpster. Never smoke on school property, please. You can go into the woods. You're off of school property. They won't find you there. Behind the dumpster. Who was it? Karen Amansky? No, I'm not saying a name. I'm not saying a name. <laughs> I'm not saying a name. But I seen it. Mr. Gregory at the time was the teacher, fifth grade teacher. Mr. Gregory Good was a uh, great guy. He saved me too, by the way. He was very much like, oh, let's not end this guy's life here. Let's, <laughs> let's fucking uh, slow down. Let's maybe talk to him. Mr. Gregory was a good guy. He was doing like the check of recess to see who's, is there anybody smooching? You know, is there sure, any, yep. anything mm -hmm. going on? And uh, I actually saw her take the smoke. Oh, so it was. And she, it wasn't her. <laughs> uh, <laughs> She flicks cigarette up in the air. I think she tried to get it into dumpster. It fell right below her. She runs. She gets called down to the office. Mm, Betsy Rogarder. I'm not saying that. <clears throat> she ratted you out immediately. Immediately. Come I mean, on. We made eye contact as she was crying going inside, and I was like, well, remember what we... You know, Why don't you throw away all your smokes then and, and deny? Because I was still outside. Couldn't just go inside, you know. So you actually hear the announcement. Well, Pat McAfee, please come down to the office. Uh, everybody, Fuck. everybody's just oh. like, well, <laughs> no. oh, fun little racket. Good Hope you run. enjoyed that grape juice, pal. You couldn't have thrown a carton away either. It would have been tough for me to get... Couldn't frame someone. It was... I mean, it was in, you know, that was back whenever you had like your own hook too to put yeah, your yeah. backpack on. Mm -hmm. So I literally had my name on it, my bag, and then you open it and there's just a cart. <laughs> That's, I'm saying all the book bags were next to each other hanging. I would have slipped potentially the carton into someone else's yeah. book bag. But we couldn't go back in. You had to wait for your class to go back in. I mean, this all happened within like a yeah. bang, bang. My operation was booming, if you yeah. could tell. There was never a thought of. Why didn't oh, order me out? Same school I got suspended in third grade because skipped art class and hid in the back, the same back of the room for a few hours. Yeah, which by the way, you could go too back there. What Anyways. were you doing back there, Diggs? Fucking, uh, there was a uh, word search, and if you got done first, you got like a lollipop or something like that. But what, everyone had to go down to art class, and no one had finished yet, and I wasn't done yet either. So we stayed back, and then we realized. We had stayed back way too long, so yeah. then we got scared and hid. You got trapped. Mm -hmm. You didn't know you were too. You were too smart. Yeah. You were too dedicated, yes. too driven. Mm -hmm. That's what I was trying to say about the six. I'm getting a call from Los Angeles. Is this your goddamn guy? Is this Miles Teller? Yeah, answer it. Hopefully. On air. I'm not answering this. <laughs> You're live. You're live. You're live. I think the caller's still on. Yeah, he is. All right, Ben. See you, pal. Let's go to Rob in Wisconsin. What's going on, Rob? <laughs> Ben had a good call. Yeah. 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 Was he a teacher? He said a lot. He was an advisor. Advisor, yeah. For the at-home Virtual kids. advisor. Yeah. Mostly talks Thank to you. parents. Hey, that's probably... That's, AJ and the boys. Hey, what's going on, man? That is probably not an easy... Thank am you, I ben. on a call right now? Three thirty. Oh. Phew. That was a big one. I thought I just hit a fuck you button on somebody rather important there. That could have affected everybody in here, by the way. <laughs> so I hope we're all having a good time. All right, I hope we're having a blast. But that is not the case. I got 12 minutes. I do have to leave. Rob, what do you want to talk about, dude? 
Hey, I got a plan to bring Aaron Rodgers back to Green Bay. Okay, what is it? Here we go. So, all last year when we were talking to him, uh, he was talking about how much he loved uh, Goldmember and Mike Myers. So, if we can get Mike Myers to Green Bay with his gold member and his fat bastard costume. Uh -huh. How was Aaron saying that? That's what I'm talking about, Rob. I like that a lot. Maybe even Julio as well. You get Mike Myers and Julio Jones in Green Bay, I bet you Aaron comes right off of that waterfall, right off his plane, right back into Green Bay. No, no, yeah, I mean, that ain't going to fucking work. I don't know where you've been, pal. He doesn't want to come back. Why are you being so mean to Rob? You have a gold member, dude. Well, Thanks. We didn't draft your receiver in the first bastard, round. We got Mike dude. fucking yeah. Myers Here's Mike Myers here. 30 years after his prime. Hey, the gold zone. What are you talking <laughs> come about? Come on, they love it. Unless Mike Myers comes in, picks up a boulder, and crushes Mark Murphy and Gutekunst's head with it, I don't think it matters. Good. Have you seen uh, a gong show? Uh, no, but you said it was pretty good. Mike Myers is dressed up as some random. You know, he's a host in, in that whole thing. Yeah. Mike Myers still got it, by the way. Oh, yeah. Still got the fastball. If he really? really? It. Yeah, I think so. What did he do? He did Shrek. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No still play. He did all, all the Austin Powers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah the all Love the Guru. Pretty. That was a good one. It's a classic. What's your problem? Yeah, why don't you do always, this to Mike Myers. Why, Wayne, why, Wayne's World. He's in Party the on. Freddy he's Mercury around. movie. Mm -hmm. Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. He was in it. Got mm -hmm. something to say about that, Nick? A little cameo. Yeah, he was in it for thirty seconds. <laughs> he was not a big spot, but a good spot. Mm -hmm. you know? Important scene. Dustin from Georgia, pal. What's going on? Hey, how's it going, y'all? I want to talk about LaFlop James and Michael Jordan. Oh, oh shit! Yeah. You always talk about how they play two different sports because of the errors, and I agree with that. Mm -hmm. And you say that Michael Jordan could play in this era, and I also agree with that, but we never talk about how the flop couldn't play in Michael Jordan's era. Oh, Actually, get out of here. 6'8", yeah, 250, yeah, Dustin. Bill Lambeer. He's jumping over Bill Lambeer's no. head. Bill yeah, Lambeer Bill is Lambeer trying to do a close on. He's hitting Braun Braun right in his thigh because he's mm -hmm. flying over his head. What are we even talking he's about, tall, Dustin? Six foot tall, 175 pounds. Who? Lambeer's seven foot tall, 245. Who? Chris Paul, six foot tall, 175 pounds. He about ripped Bron Bron's shoulder out of it. Oh, Dustin. Man, you turned your back on <laughs> LeBron yesterday. Oh, you can't go back. Go back. back. Uh, well, I was sad that LeBron did turn his back on me and his own triple-double and my money, but... This He's guy's pooping. an idiot and doesn't even know that LeBron is bigger than Bill Lampier, bigger than... Uh, yeah, you're no, good. No, Michael, Michael Jordan, yeah, Michael baby. Jordan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Back to the phones, man. Yeah. Gather your yeah, thoughts. I, I, I follow yeah. Mitt now. It's great. I think Mitt uh, retweeted Kid Cuddy yesterday. Weed is so good. I believe the tweet was. <laughs> I was like, oh, who, who put this up? Hey. I saw Mitt retweet. <laughs> yeah, but I, I did see Mitch. <laughs> Mitch Twitter buyer says uh, retweets are not endorsements. You know, oh, nice. oh okay. okay. There's some people that say that. Yes, it is. Okay. Do they make does do places make their their employees say that in their Twitter bio? Opinions do not reflect that of my employer. It's like. <laughs> kind of though like I mean I guess you could say that in your Twitter bio but I don't think that is how it actually works in the world but I appreciate you guys doing like a but for real on this show the opinions of the everybody else but me do not reflect the opinions of me just like Ty probably says the same thing for everybody else. that's right uh -huh. that's exactly right it's an open forum thank you for creating it I did. I mean, this is not something to be proud of, boys. <laughs> did anybody win that ticker trivia? No. Are we carrying it over one more day? I think Zeke's oh. weight's giving people problems. Oh, come on. No. Hey. Tell me. I what have the that? guesses been, Zeke? What what's the range of guesses? Uh, yeah, it starts at probably uh, 340. I've seen a couple 380s. Who's saying you Wait, weigh 380? Come on. Yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. Is Fox here? Probably right? taking a pick. That's all uh, he's, he's editing right now. So I, I filled in. Oh, he's got to do the vlog. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Hey, vlog's big deal tomorrow, AJ. We're, so we're giving away potentially, we're giving away 15000 tomorrow. And the vlog, massive. Mm -hmm. Massive. Gitch. Big, 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 big. Big, 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 big Friday. I'm on a call in seven minutes. That might be the biggest call this company has ever had. Big Thursday. Big, 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 big Thursday. Who is it? Is it Piven? Come on. All right. It's not Ari Gold. I wish it was. Shut up. All right. I'll talk to you guys soon. See you, man. Thank you all so much. Hammer downs in 36 minutes and 20 
five seconds. Hammer Don. YouTube.com yeah. forward slash Hammer Don. Big, big Friday. 15 grand on the line. Oh my God. Unless somebody hits for 10 grand today before 4.05. Okay? And in the vlog, be a friend, tell a friend. 3 p.m. debut of the celebration, episode 7, Mr. Friday Night. Big giveaway at the end. We can't thank you all enough. AJ, thanks for your time today, pal. Thanks, AJ. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard out rumors you may be actually getting in the ring tomorrow night, so I'm looking forward to SmackDown. All right, got to get on a plane. I will see you. AJ Stir shit. Shout out to Gabe. Shout out to Rosenberg. Shout out to everybody. Uh, have an incredible Thursday. Cheers. Yeah.